Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Classic Cast. I'm here with Tips Out. I'm here with Stay Safe. And today we have Preach Gaming joining us. And uh, Preach, would you go ahead and introduce yourself, please? I will. Uh, the producers of the show have asked me to say, Classic WoW is the best version of WoW. <laughs> Retailers are filthy scumbags. And we Sorry. shall all rejoice. Okay. I also good. make uh, guide content. <laughs> good. I was just making sure you got the whole thing down. All right, guys. Well, yeah. that's it for Classic Cast. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. <laughs> no, it's great to have you, man. It's great to have you. Um, yeah, cheers, boys. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people have wanted you on the show for for a long time now. So this is going to be a lot of fun. I think a lot of people are going to enjoy this. Um, when when did you get started playing WoW? I'm a beta baby. A beta. Are baby. we allowed to say that, or does that make me some sort of elitist scum? But no, yeah, no, that's, started, that's what we started, started before. Everyone the in chat started playing during the alpha anyway, so. Mm -hmm. Every, yeah. Oh, they beat me then. Yeah, I'm beta, they, baby. They cleared Nax and got ring 14 on the alpha. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I cleared Nax on my DK. I'm pretty hardcore. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, but um, I was playing a different MMO, but I was into MMOs. And WoW came into beta and suddenly, uh, I don't know if Blizzard was behind it. They might have been. I've thought about this a lot. Suddenly, our uh, game started filling with WoW beta keys. Uh, to <laughs> to come and try this new game. I actually thought it was terrible at first. Yeah. It was all fairies, and it was. Uh, I've always been more Star Trek than Lord of the Rings. Mm. And I was looking at it, it was all cuddly, cartoony. It looked a bit where uh, like anime Weibo to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> and all my friends were like, uh, "This is the best game ever." And I was like, uh, "You can't even murder anybody horribly." Yeah. Uh, and I left it, and then I came back, and then mm. I was like, I, th I remember leaving. And then thinking about it all night, I was like, I really do want to see what's past there. I really do want to go and see what's past there. Yeah. And then I came back, and uh, that's I was hooked for a little while after that. So what did you a play? Little, a little while. Yeah, a little while. <laughs> yeah. A what? little while. I did leave again. I did leave again. Yeah. Uh, I was. <laughs> I made a, a night elf hunter yeah. uh, with my friend who also made a night elf hunter. And we were very clever. One of us picked up cooking, the other one picked up fishing, and we did spend many hours sat by a lake with one of us fishing, the other one cooking everything we caught uh, to make Teamwork. food for our pets. Yeah, for our pets, man, because the pets needed feeding, because otherwise they'd be unhappy. And uh, that made me very sad. So I did that, and then I didn't know what to do. I was so lost that I just gave up. And then I came back <laughs> with more friends later and made a warrior, uh, which yeah. nobody liked. <laughs> I had a dwarf warrior. He was uh, stuck trying to get into Molten Core. And then finally, mm. my other MMO friends came and I made a priest because nobody else would play a healer. And that's what I was through the majority of Vanilla. That's why I saw all the content. So I actually left twice. I didn't yeah. leave the game twice. Super there you go. Yeah. Guys, I think it's so funny you said your first character was a Night Elf. I think I think everyone's first character was a Night Elf. <laughs> Mine wasn't. <laughs> they look so cool. Uh, I, know, no I know. They do flips. <laughs> Yeah, they could do flips, yeah. which was big at the time. Yeah, that was. was really big. And plus, I'd, I'd already done like five Darnassus quests. What am I going to do? Reroll? Like, I'm committed yeah. at this point, right? <laughs> uh, how far, you, you said you had trouble getting an MC on your warrior. How far did you eventually get? Oh, yeah. Are you ready for the nostalgia buttons? Here you um, go. My brother was a very big deal in vanilla. And he was part of a guild that was already doing Molten Core. They were a big fan big fish mm -hmm. and he got me into the guild um and i expected as many people still do to this day that that then entitled me to be carried all the way to exactly where they were up to um and to be fair they did offer to bring me to anixia and then i got there and couldn't get inside and then they're like have you done the attunement i was like what's an attunement <laughs> and they kicked me out and said go and do your attunement and i couldn't uh, they had a spot for Molten Core, and they asked what my fire resist was. I went, what's fire resist? <laughs> <laughs> so you sounded like went, a BFA oh. player, is basically what you're telling us. I was the exact player. I was that guy. And uh, I then checked, and it's like, the epic fire resist gear comes from Molten Core. So I was like, well, you're saying I need fire resist, but you get it from in the raid, so I can't get in the raid without it, blah, blah. And that vicious circle in my mind. And then I was like, these guys are scumbags. These guys are just awful people. <laughs> Not playing with those guys, and uh, that gamers, was my mindset. Man. Yep, that was my mindset. I thought these elitist, elitist <laughs> filth. Where basically they were just like, no, just do the work, and then we'll bring you along for free ride. Right. Mm -hmm. well, something that's uh, that's so funny. You say that you're you know, talking about like elitist, whatever. But in vanilla WoW, I think a lot of people they they understate this. And you played another MMO. What MMO did you play prior to WoW? Uh, the big one I played was called Neocron. 
uh, yeah, okay. which was a futuristic sci-fi post-apocalyptic MMO. Okay. Uh, very PvP focused, but also had a lot of PV in it. It wasn't WoW PV, but yeah. it had a lot. Uh, but it was very PvP focused and very vicious. Like it's certainly compared to WoW. Uh, mm -hmm. If you killed somebody, you got their item. <laughs> yeah. uh, which you can imagine in WoW would be like, oh my god, <laughs> <Yeah>. you <know? laughs> he stole yeah. my so... dreadnought shoulders. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, uh, but that was normal. Like, if you had something as rare as an ash candy, you could lose it in that game if someone uh... killed you. Um, yeah. So you, you do you remember? Uh, do you remember whenever other MMOs? Everybody was playing other MMOs before WoW, right? The people who were. And yeah. WoW got announced, and the people started talking about it, like, oh, that's the Care Bear game, and people talked about how easy and casual WoW was. And mm -hmm. it's it's funny now. Everybody talks about Vanilla WoW like it was this crazy hardcore game and it's only, you know, you have to be an elitist to play Vanilla WoW and this and that. I think it's funny how casual friendly Vanilla WoW actually is. And a lot of people just, they're used to MMOs today as opposed to MMOs maybe 20 years ago. And it, yeah. it's just funny how the times change. Well, gamers in general are different now. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I tell the story is that uh, I knew somebody who showed his younger brother Dark Souls. Right. And the first question the younger brother had after about 30 minutes of playing was how much is it to buy souls? Like microtransactions. Because, <laughs> oh my god. But to him, that's how he's grown up with games, right? Yeah. Every game has this option. Like to him, it makes total sense. Whereas yeah. to us, it's like, okay, crucify him, like immediately and remove that. But that's that's the thing uh, that is normal to uh, the, the younger gamers, I guess, because we are old in gaming terms. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah kind of similar idea there are people these days kids these days, that, that don't even know what the term rts means yeah they've never mm -hmm. played an rts game yeah, 4x is mind-blowing <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like i i try, i'm actually quite harsh with my sons they have two boys uh, and they're not allowed to play those kind of games they're, they're very easy like they're, they're not allowed to use easy <laughs> easy mode of mario well, that's uh, good but parenting. It's, it's done them a favors my son's actually cleared the forest now of, of uh super meat boy the first world the forest uh he's only five uh, so i've been pretty impressed with that it took him two hours to do a wall jump trick but he got there <laughs> he wow. got there and he was so happy when he did it <laughs> next year next year he's mythic rating dude there you uh, go. Not quite healing me, maybe, but uh, <laughs> I'm not letting him get like bogged down in microtransactions and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. All right. That's good. That's good. It's funny, actually. Uh, I think an article came out yesterday or today saying that EA and Activision made like $79 billion on the backs of microtransactions like in the past couple of years. Did you guys see that? Mm -hmm. $79 billion. That's crazy, man. Yep. It's a lot. That's a yeah. lot. Yeah, man. That's well, where the money is. People are. It's easier. Mm -hmm. well, Path of least resistance. The yeah. the industry has just kind of moved that way, especially like as far as like pricing models and stuff go. You look at games like League of Legends. You look at games like Fortnite, and people will just say like, well, you know, whatever. You know, I want this skin. I'll just buy it for like you know five bucks, three bucks, whatever. And then next thing you know, they bought like a hundred skins. <laughs> it's just like it just over time it just adds up, and people well, don't realize how much it's counts with thousands, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, some lol accounts are worth like stupid amounts of money with the skins and stuff on them. Mm-hmm. 100 percent yeah crazy i mean i don't mind cosmetics stuff though i think that's fine buying skins and stuff all day every day buying power i have a big problem with. right buying to skip buying to skip and uh buying to reduce the time invested i'm not a fan of that because you make the grind right right yeah. <laughs> so if you're releasing some sort of money to make the grind less i don't trust you to make a, an awful grind in order to incentivize that i really don't trust anybody to do that Right. Well, that's, that's kind of like how it feels now, uh, honestly, with uh, with leveling and BFA. I mean, you can you can buy a boost and I think you can boost to 110. But mm -hmm. uh, in vanilla in vanilla, wow, one of the big differences is leveling doesn't feel nearly as grindy. It's much slower, but it doesn't feel nearly as bad as it does in retail. Wow, because in retail, wow, like it, there's there's not really a true like feeling of progression. You don't get that true sense of progression that you do in classic and, uh, you know, Burning Crusade and so on. You know, just every time you level. You get a talent point. You get another level. You get another talent point. You get to go to your trainer and, and you get to put some skill, uh, get some skills. And it's it's like a series of small wins. Uh, that's that's what I call it. And it's just like you you feel like you're growing. You feel like oh I got this. I got this. And it's it's a lot better than oh I have to get 15 levels and just like suffer through whatever. And it's just like I, I feel like I'm just wasting my time. I feel like I'm not playing the game. Suffer. Yeah, I mean, that's what it is. Like le it's, for it's... me, like leveling every time. Like it feels like I'm not playing the game. It's like oh I have to do this before I can play the game. And in oh, so, uh, it's, it's 15 it's levels. So That's every 15 levels. Then on top of that, you know, half your gear you never replace because it's all heirlooms anyway. And then with the with the scaling zones, you know, you increase in power, you do more damage. But the monsters always have, 
you know, their, their HP scales up. So you never actually have that moment of feeling powerful. Like you never power spike for a level or two, you know, which is one of the most powerful feelings in, in vanilla. WoW. it feels great. Uh, yeah. I, I remember grinding a fair bit though, leveling in vanilla. Um, there was a, quite a few levels that I had to grind out because there wasn't any quests left. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Do, yeah. There was a that was a that was a bit of a thing I had to do. I remember having to do that specifically. Mm -hmm. um, but I haven't leveled in. I've got to be honest. I haven't leveled in WoW. I tried to level. Let me put it this way: I haven't leveled in WoW since. Besides going from like new expansion to current cap, right? Right. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't leveled like that since Miss of Pandaria. I haven't needed to level a character because so all my characters have been max level. Mm -hmm. um, but I did try and make an alliance character not that long ago, and I couldn't get to level two. Like, <laughs> oh my! God. No exaggeration. I couldn't. I got into. I, I made a beast, and I tried to level. I was so bored within the first minute and a half. I knew what was waiting for me. That I was like, I'm using one of my boosts. Like, because I had so many boosts racked up. Yeah. I was like, I'm not. I'm not doing this. This is just awful. So I level think, two beat me. I, I yeah. was going to say, I think that most people tend to boost these days, which is so weird considering that, you know, with patch 4.0, they spent so much time redeveloping the world mm -hmm. to get players back on the world. And then, oh, you, you can just boost past it anyway. It's so weird. Yeah. Mm. yeah I mean, but I'm, I'm, I don't know what the point of leveling in WoW is anymore. That's my issue. You don't learn yeah. anything. If you learned something and had some challenge, cool. Uh, that's fine. But I, I, one thing that uh, I did do was level a warlock for a video I made, and I learnt my Voidwalker by crossing into a different part of the map. Like discovering that ticked me over, and I didn't know they'd done that, and that got me very nostalgic for vanilla because I just thought that was utterly ridiculous. Yeah. And what was used to be a momentous moment on your warlock was getting your uh, Voidwalker, mm -hmm. and what name would it have? Because a lot of people re-rolled their warlocks <laughs> because the yeah. name on their Voidwalker <laughs> wasn't cool enough, right? Yeah. Um, and I think I did that once as well. And then I'd leveled in more recent where I was like, I discovered some va farm and it went, and you've learned what Voidwalker. I was like, wow, you've killed that. You've absolutely killed what should be a really fun part of the character progression, which is going and getting your demons as a warlock and bringing them from the nether. And this is yours, you know. Now you just learn it as you walk around. Mm -hmm. Randomly it appears in your spellbook. Uh, that's something that. It blows my mind that they took that away. Yeah. It really blows my mind that they took that part of the feeling away. Mm -hmm. A lot of those, yeah. a lot of those class-specific quests. I mean, th there's similar stuff for mm -hmm. druids, like unlocking your druid shape-shifting forms, warriors mm -hmm. getting, uh, you know, whirlwind axe. All these really cool iconic class quests that unlock really cool, you know, very unique things have been stripped a lot uh, away from those classes. Mm -hmm. I assume yeah. the stance quests are gone as well, then, right? <laughs> yeah, stances don't even exist in the game anymore. Yeah, right? that's true. Yeah, so they're, they're abilities now. Yeah, they're just abilities. I mean, oh, that's yeah, one of my yeah. greatest vanilla memories is going and getting my berserker stance and doing that tournament on the island with the trolls. Frey Island, man. Frey Island. Frey Island. Yeah. It was like this is a warrior only place. You definitely felt like you, you know, no one else belonged there. That was your place to be. Um, and all that stuff being gone really creeps me out because it's just that's so sad because yeah. this was really cool and you just decided to get rid of it for the sake of what? What was the gate? What was the gain? Right. Is there a game? Like, what's, what have we benefited from by doing this? That's the question I ask myself. Why is this better? And it isn't, I don't think. Well, you, you have to wonder, like, imagine someone has never played WoW before, and they're coming to play retail WoW for the first time. They buy BFA at GameStop or whatever, and they bring it home. They start leveling. You have to, you have to imagine or wonder how many of them quit because they don't feel any attachment or sense of progression by the time they're level 30 or 35. Like, you, want, you have to wonder what that, what that initial turnover is. Yeah. It's got to be huge, right? Because it just, just, just looks like a big ladder. You're buying yeah. a game, yeah. and mm -hmm. probably if your friends have recommended it as well, it's one piece of advice we pass out always is don't tell your friends to rush to the level cap. It's, it's not worth. Explore right. the world. It's a good world out there if you go and explore it. Uh, but if you're focused on gaining levels, God, that must look horrific. You're starting at zero, and you've got 120 to get. And as you said, you're only getting something of value every 15 levels. And then that stops at, what, level 100? Mm -hmm. And then you've yeah. got another 20 levels to go. <laughs> Where you don't get anything. Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah. It must look awful. It's like, okay, you bought a game and here's a mountain to walk that's not going to be that interesting because you're trying to gain levels. Yeah. yeah. Or you can pay $60 and skip everything. So you should probably do that. <laughs> that's what's yeah. happening, right? Yeah. That comes free now, right? If you oh, buy an expansion, yeah, yeah, you get that for first. free. Yeah. Yes. I, skip I, our game. Yeah, I, I guess I forgot it. You go buy BFA, Congratulations you on your new game. Skip yeah. that game, by the way. Oh. <laughs> I think it's funny that you mentioned that about like telling your friends to. Uh, 
like not telling your friends to like try and level as fast as they can and whatever. Because yeah. one of my big issues is back in high school, especially, you know, I, I try to get my friends to play WoW and, you know, I've played WoW since, you know, since about release time, a week after release. And I was getting my friends to play. They'd be kind of interested and be like, oh, sweet. So I'd tell them to play and I would be so focused on like, oh, I want you guys to enjoy the game. I want you guys to have fun that I would go and I would go get them like the nicest greens off the auction house. I would make sure that everything was like so perfect for them. And what would end up happening because I was doing all the work of like optimizing their characters for them they would just get bored and they would quit. They felt like they couldn't, they weren't even playing. And this is something that I didn't really understand. I mean, I was like, you know, 15, 16, 17 at the time. Um, but I was just like, oh, no, no, like, I'll make it better. I'll make it easier, right? But in reality, yeah. what was happening is I, I was taking it away from them. Mm -hmm. I was taking the game experience away from them and then they end up getting bored. Um, it's funny, like Boosting how... Boosting and helping is the worst thing you could do for someone. Right. Yep. Yeah. Never helped your friends, ever. Well, <laughs> 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 Like rocket mounts and stuff. There are people who don't know where anywhere is because their friends just said, climb aboard and they took them exactly where they needed to go. Kill this. You yeah. don't learn anything. It's mindless. It's monotonous. It's boring. You don't know why you're doing anything. They usually tell you to stop reading the quests because we're just going <laughs> to get through the levels, right? They're just trying yeah. to zerg their ways up to the levels. So it's like, no, don't read that. Look, I'll just take you to where to go. Uh, we're doing this dungeon now. We're doing this dungeon. And then they, they go 120 or whatever. They just leave you. And you're like, uh... I don't know where anything is. I don't know why we did any of this stuff. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So it, it just, it's, it's really funny how that all kind of pans out. Um, when did you really feel like, when did you really feel like the game started changing for you? Like in terms of, you know, we're, we're talking about this whole, like the concept of, of class fantasy and, you know, you're doing your warlock quest as a paladin, you've got your auras, you've got your seals. For me personally, and I think a lot of people feel this way, but I think Cataclysm was like a really big, like just, shot to the gut for me and i was just like what am i playing oh really because yeah. i'm the opposite i really liked cataclysm really <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't get the hit uh it might be just it, it all wow comes down to the circles you play in right um because <clears throat> depending on who you're playing with your perspective is so different like mm -hmm. the burning crusade was great for me mm -hmm. so good because i was in a raid guild at the start there was the first you know i started tbc in a very good raid guild um, I had people who were hungry and thirsty to play and to progress and do all that kind of stuff. So I got to do all of the Burning Crusade content from the get-go. Uh, and then I was talking to uh, a friend of mine, uh, Noble, <clears throat> who hated the Burning Crusade. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. hated it. And I said, why? And he's, I was like, it was so good. We got to, like, we had shot Halls runs. We had all these things going on outside of raids. We got all this massive map of things to get done. Why did you hate it? It's like, because I couldn't do any of that stuff. Like, I didn't have the, the support structure in place mm. to make it work. So, for me, it was all stuff that everybody else was doing, and I couldn't be a part of. And I ended up running Karazhan like 8 million times, you know? Um, <clears throat> for me, Wrath, start, uh, Wrath was a big turning point because they made a lot of things very easy in the PvE world. Mm. And that's when I was at my mega nerdiest, like proper, pop, you know, spot popping nerd. Mm -hmm. And. Mm -hmm they made like threat easier and i was a tank and i was like oh like all the plebs play you know that kind of attitude right. uh it took a lot of the challenge away from my hands as to what i was doing um mr pandaria also i did that video that we talked about before the stream <laughs> started yeah. where mott seems to be going in a very weird direction and uh I, I gradually things have gotten a little worse and then got better in legion kind of and then Obviously, we're where we are now. Um, the best state uh, of the game ever right now. So that's all time best, I think. We shall not speak its name. But the, <laughs> for me, I noticed it going away from what I really, which is the very hardcore, mega tryhard style in Wrath. And I'm not saying it was a bad thing, but that's when it started changing for me. It was mm -hmm. way back then. But I still relatively enjoyed later Wrath. Like, the launch of Wrath was a disaster for a Raider's standpoint. You know, mm -hmm. Nax was a joke. Malagos was a joke. Obsidian Sites was okay. And then we were done, and that was it. It was like it had been done, you know, a few days into the expansion, and then we were bored to death until Ulduar came and things picked up again. Hmm. Um, but then we got LFD during ICC. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, and then it was like downhill again. It was like, whoa, what is what is going on here? Who are these players? Because until that point, I'd been shielded from the the worst players in the game, and <laughs> LFD really opened that door, and I was like, whoa, what is going on? And that did not do well for what was not a very nice mic at that point. I wasn't a very nice guy then, certainly in game. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, I made no bones about it. And um, that's when it started to really 
change because I was like, oh my god, like now I'm actively carrying people if I want to do this content and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, I can always move back into where I preferred. And yeah, it's definitely Wrath for me is when yeah. I noticed it was changing for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's funny because if you ask a lot of people today, they look back on Wrath very fondly. <laughs> but at the time, the forums, MMO champion, like everybody hated Wrath, I remember. And Wrath actually yeah. was the first time. And then you mentioned at the start of Wrath, it's the first time where I feel like I bet I actually beat the game because up until then, I hadn't really rated. I ended. I rated at the very end of TBC. I was still young, learning the game, stuff like that. And I had heard about this like epic, you know, thing that's rating, and it's, you know, you join all these people and you do this crazy stuff, and it's uber hard. And then you step into Nax and you clear it right away, and you're just like, that was rating. That was terrible what decision. I was, yeah, horrible and terrible decision. I mean, up until then, I'm. You played. Uh, it's called Neocrom, You said. Yeah, Neocrom with an N. Neocrom. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I came from RuneScape and Ultima Online, and, like, if you told me at the time you're going to beat RuneScape, you're going to skill up 99 every single one of your skills, I would have been like, you're crazy. Like, you cannot beat this game. There's just too much to do. And seeing an MMO beat for the first time was, like, really deflating. And, yeah, I would say Wrath. That was the tipping point for me, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, that's Wrath when, was... That's when the term Wrath Baby came about. Wrath Baby. Yeah, yeah and a lot of people don't know that. <laughs> yeah. I, I addressed it in the video once. It's like, people think that just means you started... Which is not what it meant. <laughs> it meant the people who started in Wrath and didn't realize how easy they had it, mm -hmm. and were noticeably yeah. very uh, much worse than a lot of the people yeah. who were around mm -hmm. in vanilla and CDC. I, That's I where Wrath Baby came from. I remember yeah. really hardcore bullying, and not just myself. You know, I'm not the only one that did it. Uh, anyone that didn't have champion <laughs> of the Nari or hand of a doll, they were a Wrath Baby. They started in Wrath. You're a Wrath Baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've not even not even done your achievements, scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> for me my my wrath experience uh so i i played at the very beginning of wrath i had a ton of fun in the wrath pre-patch i played a red paladin so of course i did uh so i had a ton of fun in the pre-patch started playing and i got to about level 75 i think before i quit just a lot of my friends had quit and i wasn't really feeling it so it was just like i don't know um i just i quit for a while and i came back i think it was my senior year of high school i came back towards uh the end of the expansion and whenever i came back you know, because of gear score, I didn't have any gear because I didn't have any achievements. Uh, I ended up not being able to get into anything. So, like, for me personally, I, I do think, like, Wrath, like, from, 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 like, a system standpoint with LFD and all this stuff, like, I, I, I'm not a fan of a lot of stuff that was introduced then. But from a class fantasy standpoint, I still, like, felt like I was playing a paladin for the most part. The big thing for me with Cataclysm is, and, and maybe this is specific to paladins, but... Whenever they swap the seals and the judgments and the, um, well, I guess you still have judgment, but like the seals and then the auras and the judgment system work differently. Like that, that switching that and going to holy power, it just like totally like messed with my head. And I just felt like I didn't even play, like I wasn't even playing a paladin anymore. Um, I don't know. And, and we still have that system now and it's gotten better to me, but that was just kind of like from a class fantasy perspective, I, uh, I, I was really not happy with that as a paladin. When Kata came out. Yeah, when Kata came out. <laughs> Is that yeah. when you had the three judgments? Uh, Wrath, you had... Th I actually didn't like this either. Wrath, you had three judgments. Yeah, that's right. I didn't, I didn't like that, where you had judgment of justice, judgment of wisdom, and judgment of light. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I liked that whenever I casted a seal, I, like, it, would, it would load up a certain effect on the judgment, and then it would apply that effect. I, I thought that was cool. Like, I, I always really liked that. And then technically it was better in Wrath. You did more damage, and you know, your, your class was more effective. I just didn't like it as much. Yeah, I, I also think that's paladin specific, but I think something that applied to everyone when Kata came out. You know, this is the world of Warcraft, and for six or seven years, vanilla TBC Wrath, people had been engaging with vanilla or OG Azeroth. You know, it was a big part of their life at that point. And when Kata came out, the world that they had built memories in and filled and um, made friends in, and maybe found a, a girlfriend, in, like whatever. You know, all <laughs> these memories you had were just clean slated new world, and I mm -hmm. think that really alienated a lot of people when Kata came out. Yeah. Interesting. Never thought of it. So I thought I mean, it brought life back to the world that we'd kind of abandoned. But I, I think whenever <laughs> whenever Kata came out, I remember there being a lot of hype behind. Oh, updated world, updated textures. Like, oh, this is cool. Like Deathwing came and just like ripped everything apart. Um, but I think in hindsight, whenever you look at it now, it's kind of like, man, like we've been in this world longer than we were in the original world. If you've been playing retail WoW the whole time, right? Yeah. Which is yep. like. I mean, I, I think I think a lot of people think about that, and it's like, well, crap, dude. And then you, you never really have to go through the world. It's uh, 
I don't know. Just everything seems like so trivialized now. And I think that's one of the reasons people are so excited for classic is, um, I, I think, I think classic has two, there's two forms of excitement about classic. There's one because people actually enjoyed the design of the game. Like m me personally, like I think vanilla wow was designed really, really, really well. Like I, I thought, I thought that game was great. I also think there's a nostalgia. There's a, there is a nostalgia factor. And while that works for some people, I, I don't think, I don't think a lot of the people who've been wanting vanilla wow for a lot of years are focused entirely on nostalgia. They like the game for the game. The actual, the game itself is actually good, but there is going to be a lot of people who try out classic initially just to be like, Oh wow. Like we're back in this, in this old world again and uh, seeing how everything turns out, you know? Yeah. The launch is going to be so interesting and I hope it doesn't turn into a meme. <laughs> oh <laughs> my God. Not, yeah, yeah, it could do. Uh, it really could. If it's, one of them people got to put the money where their mouth is. We've been asking for it. And I was so happy when it was announced. So I was like, those guys fought hard, <laughs> right? Those guys fought long and hard and relentlessly, like some sort of political movement to get this thing done. And yeah. uh, then they had it thrown in their face with the, you think you do, but you don't. Um, which I think held some weight at the time. I don't think he thought he was that wrong um, yeah. when he said it. And factually then, he wasn't i think factually he wasn't i think a lot of people i mean even nostalrius right 80 percent of the people that tried nos left so i think factually he wasn't wrong but the way he said it and the attitude yeah in which he i said agreed it, yeah yeah he came across wrong but i don't think he was that wrong in a lot of people's cases yeah. i think he knew what he was saying uh but then they said you yeah. know we're gonna do the vanilla and people lost their mind mm -hmm. But now we're seeing, because uh, we were I was laughing before we started, because I wanted to catch up on exactly where the information was to make sure I, I was ready. And we, there's still a war, <laughs> still at each other's throats <laughs> about what exactly they want from Classic. Yeah. Uh, and this is going to be the problem when it starts, is so many people are going to try it. It's going to be insane, and they're going to be able to post these wonderful numbers about people trying this. I have no doubt that's going to Is So many people are going to try it. Mm -hmm. And then the reality is going to come back and the nostalgia guy is going to go, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Like AOE looting, for instance, people are going to be like, oh, <laughs> you know, this kind of <laughs> sucks. And then the mobs are going to start murdering them horribly. The mages are going to have to stop and drink and eat after, you know, every couple of packs or whatever. And that's going to happen uh, to people who aren't prepared for it at all. A lot of people who aren't prepared for it. I'm prepared for it. I'm fine with it. I know what I'm going to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then the drop off is going to be pretty significant, but Let's hope the guys who fought hard for this actually turn up and stay mm -hmm. and don't go, but I've got a private server and it's free, you know, and I'm okay there. I've already got a character because we saw when the thing happened with Nost, when that all went to, uh, went to tits up, is people were more angry that they'd lost their characters. Like that became pretty apparent pretty quickly is that although Nost was putting out those letters and they were fighting the good fight and they were doing their thing, Mm -hmm. ultimately the people who really got loud and complaining about it weren't actually interested in the cause or whatever they wanted their characters back <laughs> and that's all they really cared about like that was a meme at the time uh remember reading on their forums well surprisingly <laughs> well here's the thing i mean it's actually i don't know like i believe it's been the, the past couple of years where we've seen this phenomenon like really rise up and it's it's the meme of the fresh servers mm -hmm. so i want to hear your thoughts on this breach because this is really interesting um <laughs> basically how private servers have been working is they go all the way through and recently they've they've been able to script nax and then once people complete nax a couple months later they launch a fresh server and ironically enough you would think that the people that have just completed nax would want to stay on their characters but people are actually willing to abandon their full nax tier three characters to start on a fresh server brand new mm -hmm. from zero and abandon all that progress what do you think about that what numbers are we talking give me some context um, I mean, so for example, let's say 10,000 people play on this server and that right. same server provider is launching another server and then you'll find like 9,000 are playing the fresh server and only 1,000 stay on the original server. It's like that crazy of a distribution. Yeah, it always so cannibalizes the old server. Like, like seasons almost. Almost like seasons, almost like yeah. Seasons. Yeah, people are treating it like seasons. What, to see how quickly they can do it again? Is that the idea behind it? I mean, it's, I don't know, it does have an appeal, like I do it too, right? But like... It's like playing on a fresh server, you know, competing again with everybody again to level the fastest, maybe playing a new class, um, you know, trying to be in the upper echelon of players this time around. Everyone's got their I, own goals. But I, I, I think the biggest appeal of Classic WoW, Vanilla WoW, is the community aspect. And I, I personally feel like that community aspect is shining its brightest in the first maybe month or two. 
people are yeah, leveling, definitely. they're working together, they're mm -hmm. forming guilds, they're forming connections, they're doing dungeons, they're working to get into Molten Core very fast. Mm -hmm. I feel like that is when the community is at its peak. Yeah. I, I think the big problem with the, with the whole Fresh meme is the reason why Fresh happens is because oftentimes there's these private servers that have been like, you know, they're trying to make a new server for profit and this and that. And the problem is, is, you know, people want that experience that, that stay safe was talking about. So they end up being like, okay, well, I, everybody's going to go play there. You know, the server's going to die. They just assume. And then that just adds to the people that are already going to leave anyway. And then it ends up being like a whole thing. So a lot of people have talked about this, like, what are they going to do when classic like goes through a whole cycle and, uh, you know, we, we've talked about it before, like, you know, if, if they want to release a fresh or whatever. The biggest problem with fresh servers, uh, at least in the private server scene, the biggest problem was because servers were trying to, like, compete with each other for whatever reason, right? You know, maybe monetary gain or whatever. They would release halfway through the lifespan of another server. So what would happen was you would get to AQ and then the server, like, starts to die. Or mm. you would get to Nax and, you know, y your server went from like 10,000 population, like 2,000 people finish. And as soon as they finish, boom, we cleared, we killed KT once and we'd go. Now, that hasn't something that has historically happened time and time again because Nax scripting on private servers hasn't been good. But mm -hmm. um, that's like the trend, right? Where, yeah. you know, it's AQ is about to come out. Okay, time to start over. We're going to go play, play up the BWL patch again and then start over again. And I think one of the things that I'm excited about with Classic is I do think that they should do the fresh server thing, but I don't think it should happen sooner than like maybe six months after Nax comes out. I think that was the original timeline for vanilla, like six, at least six months. You know, yeah. I think that's in 2018 in current year. I think that's one of the things where people know enough. Now they've gotten better at the game enough to the point where six months should be plenty of time to be able to uh, experience Nax before a new server comes out. I don't think they should do a reset, but I think that they should release a new, a new set of servers mm -hmm. where people can choose to, to level up there and maybe potentially merge the remaining 1.12 servers into like take, a, take like clusters of them and then merge them together uh, based on like population loss or whatever. There are yeah. a couple of questions on that then. Mm -hmm. um, six months. So are we basing this on them releasing everything when it starts? Hell no, dude. Hopefully, there's no, no way no, they're no, doing no. that, right? Yeah, no, 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 no. yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. But ultimately, uh, when Nax is out, and is also this just to stem? And my second question would be, is this just to stem fatigue? Because once Nax is done, the obvious question will then become at some point, inevitably, we want more stuff to do. Mm -hmm. There's no way that question won't come up from a few people, and also people will go, "Well, that's not classic." But we've seen already the people who have some interest in this mm -hmm. are already asking for changes, and at some point they will be asking, "What's next for me?" Um, is that the idea here? Is to try and stem that and say, "Well, the best thing to do is actually is to you've learned a lot in season one. Let's go in season two. Let's go season three and see what we can develop that way." Yeah, that I mean, the, the I, idea I, I think this? I think ideally they should relaunch. <laughs> another vanilla server a new one otherwise we're back where we are right now where no one has a, a fresh uh or, or starting uh vanilla server to play on i think also they should move the first server onto tbc so they're catering to both those crowds that want to progress their character further and also new players that would like to come in and they missed it the first time maybe mm -hmm. uh, what do you I, think about tbc preach do you think they would do it um i would prefer tbc over vanilla that's my state on it mm -hmm. um I, I mean, are we talking about a staggered system? Is this kind of ideal that some of you want? Which is because I'm not know. Like, I haven't been part of the inner circle of the classic mm -hmm. stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Like, you want a server that's currently in classic, another one that's currently in TBC, another one that's currently in Wrath, and it kind of staggers along, you know, in this circular fashion of progression, where you keep going up. And where does that end? Does it ultimately end back at Legion? Mm -hmm. uh, with and then you've got like. I don't know, what, eight? How many expansions have there been? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like eight different servers running different versions of WoW, and how does that cannibalize each other? If one's vanilla server can cannibalize on itself, as you just said, then when it's going fresh, you know, that tends to cannibalize the entire server of one. Mm -hmm. How thinly are we going to spread the player base that's interested in nostalgics? Mm -hmm. uh, is that player base there? And then you end up with really sort of low ones. It's a dangerous, and I'm sure these are what they talked about in terms of like, if we start this, where do we end this? Like, yeah, we need yeah. To be right. that, that's got to have been the big reason not to go ahead with it straight away. I think so. I don't think it was anything mean or nasty. They're not like, <laughs> die, but fans. <laughs> right, no, right. they were just like, okay, we, if we start this, where does it end? Because we're starting somewhere that we obviously know the end is 12 years long. Do we want to do that? Is that beneficial? Right. I do, I I do think. I don't know the answer to that. 
<clears throat> I do think once they offer a fresh vanilla server, like the first iteration, the first classic servers, they've sort of opened Pandora's box, so to speak. They can't ever stop offering vanilla servers. Otherwise, we're back where we are right now, where the only right. option is to play on a private server, right? right? Yeah. I think yeah. I think there's that. Uh, I I think a lot of people want the original three. A lot of people want to go through vanilla Burning Crusade and Wrath again. I think that they should. Now my my theory on what I would like to see them do. I don't know if they should do this actually, but but this is this is what I would like to see. I think they should just fork it a whole ton, and it's like, well, doesn't that split up the community or the player base or whatever? And I'm like, well, sure, but there's going to be enough people playing to where you at least have enough people on you know x amount of servers playing to where it's still it's still going to be just fine and i think they should go <clears throat> traditional progression you know with a with a vanilla server and then at the end of that vanilla server whenever the first set of servers comes out you you have another set of burning crusade servers come out where you can copy your character over to that over to a burning crusade server the reason why i say you should copy your character over instead of like starting from scratch or or progressing the original server is because if you start from scratch, you're going to have huge, huge population imbalance on the Horde side. Just, I mean, it, just from a playability standpoint, like, a, like the Horde is, is honestly just like better in Burning Crusade. Um, and people have seen that on private servers. Like people have tried to open up Burning Crusade private servers and it's just like massive, like 80 to 20 population imbalance in favor of Horde. So if you're starting with your original 60 character on that Burning Crusade server, that doesn't stop you from re-rolling, but it de-incentivizes re-rolling a little bit by, okay, well, I'm, I'm already at level 60. Uh, so there's that. And then uh, I don't think you should necessarily progress the original server because a lot of people might just want to play 112 forever, right? They might just want to play 112 forever. So if they do want to progress the original server, then I think they should make some 1.12 servers that are basically just like holding servers where anybody who has a character up to 1.12 can transfer on to that server and there could be a community of people who choose to just play 1.12 forever. I also can think. You, and, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, can you just imagine what's going on at Blizzard HQ right mm -hmm. now? Like the conversations they're having about this stuff. Oh yeah, I mean, it, it's probably so much like, should we do this? Should we do that? Like, is this gonna be worth it? Like, are we gonna lose money if we do this? Like, there, there's so many moving parts. But like, on top of that, you release another fresh vanilla server, like Stay Safe said, and then is the question of post nax content kind of in the style of OSRS? Like that question comes up too. So it's mm -hmm. like, what do you like? What do you want to do? I, I mean, it's. There ends up being like potentially like four different forks in there, but um, it's, I, I want to see what they're come down to what they're doing, right? Right. They're gonna have to wait and see. Like planning yeah. for this stuff, you could say we could go these nine million different routes. We could do that, but yeah. ultimately we need to wait and see how many people actually do this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We are putting our money where our mouth is. Saying, all right, here you go. Show us that you actually care about this thing and make it work before we then start saying, right, we're gonna do this, this, and this, and this afterwards. Because they, uh, they do have some time to play with, depending on how slowly they bring in patches and content. I think at their side, it's more of a trial <clears throat> to see maybe, is this a profitable way to go? Is this something we want to do? Uh, do we want to invest more resources in this? But we're going to have to wait and see how many people actually do this, like for real, while paying money to do it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Which is going to be the interesting bit for them. I'm sure they're going to watch and see, okay, let's see what's happening six months later. There's, there's I, the I, obvious I, off. Now, yeah. where is it leveling out at? What, what's our people gonna be interested? I don't know. Do you guys? What do you guys expect numbers wise? I mean, we're making a lot of assumptions here. Like, do you expect yeah. this to be huge? Well, yeah. I, I think it'll be huge. But I do want to say real quick. I think that there are a lot of people who have heard about classic vanilla. Like, oh, it's gonna be cool. But you know, my favorite was Burning Crusade, or my favorite was Wrath. Mm -hmm. So I think every time they move on to a new to a new version, TBC or Wrath or whatever, they will be bringing new people in that perhaps weren't interested in the previous version, vanilla or TBC. Or you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Everybody's and, got. Well, they change everything so much every expansion, which is obviously a yeah. bigger complaint these days. Is every expansion's like everything's different? I have to start again and relearn your game because you keep making these big sweeping changes. So obviously there are people who loved an expansion I hated. You know, yeah. I didn't find that much funny because they found it fun. Um, does that mean they're going to come back and play it forever? I think that's a you know that's a big ask. They might come back and check it out. Um, I hope I just I I just don't want it to be a meme like I said before I don't want it to be like a big thing, and then people are like I can't be asked and then like it just drops down to something useless, and everyone's mm -hmm. left like, Ugh. yeah, you know well, we tried our best. All the complaints get so loud because they do listen when people go crazy, and when yeah. these guys who aren't the guys who are 
you're hoping for on the classic servers. Like myself, it was like, I know what I'm getting into. I'm aware of what the problems are and I'm aware of what the good things are. Hmm. But if they start logging in and everybody's a warrior or a rogue, you know, like I've seen, I, I, I saw some raid logs. I did some checking on some classic server raid logs and they were like all warriors and rogues. And a couple of mages, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Everybody went to, because they know they're going to be great. That's mm -hmm. it. They know before we even start, they're going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. So why not roll that class, right? Like, why not be that way? Um, I hope those guys don't just drift off and find a miserable experience and then start screaming because those guys are loud. Yeah. And Blizzard has to take notice. I hope they do the OSRS where they let people vote. But even then, they're going to be people angry, right? Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. going to be a lot of like people voting for just like absurd things too. That's the yeah, yeah. yeah. We see it now, don't we? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can, why not make balance just perfect? It's like, well, that's a big ask, man. That yeah. changes a lot of how vanilla works. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's yeah. not going to be the thing. And we talked about phasing earlier because it was Ian who said, uh, "What was the wording? Yeah, we don't want to recreate." Oh, we the don't classic launch, launch the classic experience. Launch. The classic yeah. launch experience. Now that to me could either mean they're going to make a lot of servers and then they'll merge them, or phasing might be something they're considering to make sure performance mm -hmm. is good. And that uh, would be the yeah yeah that would yeah. kill it the ph Ian, word Ian, man Ian also said you know we know <laughs> vanilla means vanilla it means the rough edges and and inconveniences but we know vanilla means vanilla so in my mind sort of a rough launch with a lot of people clogged up zones we were talking about a server launch um, I think that's just kind of a rough edge you know that'll last a couple of days you get through it and then it's all good hope yeah. so I, really I would agree. Hope so. I agree with Stacey, but the, the one thing that makes me question it is that they explicitly pointed out the launch experience. And like, that's the scary part. Like, I'm, I'm sure you know, Preach, uh, phasing is not something that vanilla people typically like very much. Even like, re dude, nobody likes phasing. I don't think right? BFA I think... people like it. I can't yeah. see people in my own guild. It is utterly insane. Yeah. Yeah. yeah utterly it's... insane. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm here. So am yeah. I. Yeah. It's like, not only are we on the same server, we're in the same guild and we can see each other. This yeah. is absolute yeah. madness. Absolute madness. I will take the the performance hit. Because I loved going into Ironforge and my PC started going, no, stop, stop, please stop it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, uh, because it was like, this is a full world. This is why this mm -hmm. is happening. This is why this, this is happening. There's so many people around all doing stuff, you know? Yeah. I thought that was part, that is part of the fun for me for Vanilla. Mm -hmm. And also, you want the people who are the champions of the server to be recognized. Because yes. that's what makes the server community. And you also want the mm -hmm. people who get ostracized. Mm -hmm. because they're terrible people that's <laughs> part of the community like yeah. it or not that is part of it the yeah. guy who scams your enchanting mats you want to know about that guy yeah and that's yeah. the guy there he is, yeah, that's there the he guy is. Yeah. and there's yeah. that guy from that guild right there's, mm -hmm. there's that, that's the guild that cleared blah 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 first and the thing is mm -hmm. it's like you can't you can't have like these you can't have good players if you don't have bad players right mm -hmm. both both mm -hmm. from like a skill standpoint and a character standpoint Right, the people who are, you know, oh, that's like, that's a good dude. That guy's like, you might be in a really high-end rating guild, and it's like, oh, yeah, that guy's actually, like, incredibly friendly and incredibly nice and, and all that stuff. Or the guy's in the incredibly high-end rating guild, and he's just like, oh, that, that guy's a total jerk. Like, I, I like you do not want to have anything to do with that guy, right? I mean, you never know, not only, right? But not that's, only that, I know people for Classic who are excited about being an enchanter. They don't yeah. care about the raids, don't care about anything yeah. else. They are dying to stand in Iron Forge and do people's intro. They yeah. cannot wait for it. And that's awesome. Because the game doesn't cater to those guys anymore, profession guys. And uh, I know then they're saying, like, I just want to be there all day and sort people's in. I will be the trustworthy enchanter on the server. That's what I want to be. And that's what they're hyped for. And that's so cool. Mm. So, so cool. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And to go back to your original question, Preach, about how many people do we think will will do this thing, um, the way I see it is is three big conditions have to be met. If we assume that they link the subscriptions, and I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit later, um, between retail and classic WoW, if we assume that no like very negative changes are made to the game, hopefully, because that would cause a big uproar in the community, but let's assume no changes are made. And then number three, let's assume BFA continues on its same trajectory as it is now. Which way uh, is that? Up or down? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think Stay Safe said it on All Crap the other week. He thinks it's going to, uh, it's going to be bigger than retail. And I think if all three of those conditions are met, I would, I would definitely throw in the towel with him. Um, especially when you, you know, as Fan referred to two types of people that are interested in classic, I would add a third type, and that is those that have never played but are curious. Yeah. And that num that number grows every single 100%. day. That BFA is not doing well. That number grows. And yep, if BFA yes, continues yes. on this trajectory, more and more people are going to be curious. Okay, this classic thing that we dismissed last year, you know, it's sounding interesting right now. Let's check it out. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
I, I totally agree with that. I think BFA has done all the favours. All the favours in the world. Which I'm kind of interested to see how this um, demo is going to go. Because uh, mm. I have it. Mm -hmm. And I'm interested to see what the reaction is to it. Because I think in a way... I, I, I have talked about this before, but not here. Um, is that the demo seems pointless to some. Like, what, what are we demoing here? This is like the demo, <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> but in actuality, it's a really great way of preparing people who are curious for exactly what they're getting into, so they don't walk into a first stop. Yeah. Like, wait, so you mean three... you you have the demo right now? No, no he I'm meant he has a first. That. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that he's I'm playing just... it now. <laughs> he's playing it now. <laughs> One sec, I'm just going into the spider cave. Uh, <laughs> but no, I I think it's really good if it gets in front of we can if you know between us we can get it in front of a lot of a lot of people is to say okay this is what you need to be ready for and they get a, a warm up and a taste of what exactly is going to happen instead of day one they walk into it and everybody's dying horribly and falling to pieces i think that's uh i think it's a really good idea i think the demo is very clever i thought it was a really good idea just to break that barrier i think if classic would have just come out it could have been a big big disaster for a lot of people mm -hmm. but if they stream it and they have videos out and people are making content on it and saying this is what you're getting and this is the stuff and this is how you deal with it because mm -hmm. we didn't have that back in vanilla right so yeah, I've seen. I checked the classic Reddit. It's full of guides. Like people are already like, "This is what you need to be doing." Yeah. Well, um, a, a big thing with those guides yeah. too. A, a lot of stuff that's coming out like more recently is like, there's there's stuff that's different on private servers than there was in retail vanilla WoW, and we don't know exactly what we're gonna get in classic. And if it matches accurately uh, what vanilla was 100, percent there's going to be a lot of things in these guides. And I, I've talked about this before. A lot of these guys are coming out and it's, you know, maybe people didn't play like actual vanilla or like they didn't, they didn't have like the level of expertise that they had. Did we just lose tips? There we go. Um, so. No, he's back. He's back. Uh, but they didn't, they didn't really understand the game quite, quite as well as they do now, uh, which is, which is understandable. But like a lot of the information that they've filled in, everything that they know now is with like private server stuff. So it was like private server bugs and just errors in scripting and stuff like that. Just like looking at a lot of guides, like that's something that I've noticed and, um, uh, I think I think people are going to learn stuff even in classic because they're gonna be like, oh, I thought it worked like this, but on the private server it was like this. I guess that was wrong, and it's actually supposed to work like this. And then you're you're gonna have to play off of that. Yeah, I wonder yeah, if we'll yeah. have people so, saying, well, the private servers had it right, and classic now has it wrong. Well, I always point this out, so, like man. the add-ons yeah. mm -hmm. servers uh, put the raids up and stuff. Those add-ons we didn't have in vanilla. Like, that just didn't yeah. work in my vanilla. I'll tell you that now, like, range checkers on healing specifically. Right. Uh, I was a healer all through vanilla. I would have loved a range checker on my unit frames. That would have been a very big deal, but we didn't have that. Yeah. So I wonder if they're going to, how they're going to work out. Yeah, is decursive going to be a thing? Because decursive mm -hmm. was a thing for a really long time. Uh, how are they going to, how are they going to manage that? Are they going to let people use the private server add-ons? Because they weren't part of the experience. And they do change the experience. I want to know how they're going to do that. But I think I still think it's a really great idea to have a demo and show people what they're going to, mm -hmm. especially early levels where they're going to get hammered so yeah. hard. They're going to be hammered into the ground. Oh, people are going to die at like level three. They're going to die. Uh, where is it in uh, in Elwyn Forest when you go to the, uh, the the grape fields or whatever with all the defias? People are just going to mm -hmm. like die there, like over and over and yeah, over you again. Just, you pull too many of them, you're just dead because you got three of them on you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, geez. I, I don't really know how to say this, but I feel like with a lot of stuff you do in retail, wow, if you're doing a dungeon or LFR or if you're leveling, you can kind of like be paying attention to Netflix and you can be watching a video on your second monitor, or reading a book or doing homework, right? But in vanilla wow, oftentimes you really have to just play the game. And I don't, I'm not saying it's bad either. The game actually, it, it commands your attention, but it also feels good because it's, it's very fun and rewarding at the same mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You I want the game to that. do that, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. A big part about the new raid in 8.1 uh, that I brought up is that the, the fights were engaging and kept me interested. I actually said specifically, it stops me checking Spotify and Netflix during <laughs> the fight. Because there's some of them that do. You know, there's some raid bosses and stuff, and that raiding's my thing. Is like, this is boring for like a minute and a half. Like, nothing's happening at all. Like, this mm -hmm. is a non -thing. And I don't have to watch. And I can watch TV. I can watch something else uh, while I'm playing, which isn't. Why am I here? I could just be watching TV. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Uh, but they. The new raid does appear to be doing that, which is great. And but you're right, vanilla does this as well because suddenly that mob that's patrolling off in the distance, he looked fine, but now he sees you, and that's that's the end of your game. You better start running. You better start, get get to stepping on that warrior because 
<laughs> There's no victory rush, baby. <laughs> it's game over. <laughs> <laughs> it's game over. You better battle shot your way to victory. Yeah. But I'd say... Uh... There's a lot of stuff that won't come back, though, even from the nostalgic side. Like, I, my favorite memories of Vanilla are very easy. I remember them as clear as clear as today. The first time I walked into Stormwind is one of the best gaming experiences I've ever had. Mm -hmm. like, when I walked into that area and the music started playing across that bridge with all the statues, I had never seen anything like that in any video. Blew my yeah. mind. Mm -hmm. And the same as walking into Westfall for the first time and the entire, like, tundra shifted. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it all became yellow and bright and boy, from the green you had just had. That kind of stuff won't ever happen again. Because, again, we know too much about the game. I've experienced it a billion times now. I don't know whether people are expecting to have that feeling back. So well, I don't think they're going to get that. <clears throat> so from my experience, um, you know, and, and I, I'm not a longtime private server player. I, I played, like, one fresh server. Um, but whenever I came back to the game, it's, it's not the same exact experience. Uh, but it's a different experience. And, like, I, I do think... For me personally, like playing on a private server now feels kind of empty because, you know, Classic is coming. So it's just like one of those things where it's like, I mean, what what am I going to do? Like how far am I going to get before Classic comes out or we get some sort of beta testing period or whatever. But whenever I, I, I revisited Vanilla for the first time in however many years, it was one of those things where I was like, there was a little bit of nostalgia there. But just because it wasn't the same exact experience... It was a different experience that was very, very good as well. And, I mean, there's a lot of people like, you know, like Tips mentioned too, there's people who are curious about Vanilla who, you know, they, they maybe didn't get a chance to play. And I, I do think that just because it's not going to be the same exact experience, it's going to be a very enjoyable experience regardless. And, I mean, just imagine if you could go back like 15 years, right? Imagine if, if you, you had all the knowledge you have about any subject and then you could go back 15 years in time and then apply what you know now back then. And I think that's something that for me, like that's how I felt with like my palette and stuff. And you know, whenever I played vanilla, it's like, well, well I, I remember a lot of this stuff and like I learned it over time, but now I can go back to the beginning and, and start from scratch. And uh, I don't know. I mean, that was, that was a really, really awesome experience for me. And then even then I was still learning stuff. And like I said earlier, that's where you kind of get the discrepancy between, is this a private server thing or is this a classic thing? Like, why did I not know this back then? Was I, did I just not know, or is this something specific to private servers? So uh, there, I think there's a lot of different factors there. Yeah. What do you think is going to grab people, the, the curious people? Because those are going to make or break it, maybe, is if you can grab people who'd never had that experience, like mm -hmm. you said, they never got to play it then. What do you think it is that's going to grab them this time around? Like you already mentioned it. Of, yeah. You already mentioned it, the Warlock quest, the uh, getting your, your totems as a shaman, um, getting you know your... your Freaking level 10 axe as, mm -hmm. as a warrior or a sword, depending on what, what race you are. Those the RPG stories. elements, the, the stories, the RPG mm -hmm. elements yeah. that have been yeah. stripped from the game over time that make you feel like, oh, I'm an actual character in this world. This world is just as mm -hmm. much alive as I am. It just, the itches that, that BFA and Modern WoW scratches are very different than, than the itches that, that Vanilla scratches. And I think mm -hmm. it, sometimes it's unfair to compare the two games because they're so different, but they appeal to so many different senses that it's those different senses that are finally going to be mollified for the first time in years. That's what's going to bring people back, in my opinion. I think you're right. Like, I think if you're a Mythic Raider in, in Retail WoW and you're looking for the most mechanically challenging gameplay experience, you might be bored with Vanilla WoW. Like, honestly, Retail WoW might be the game for you. But I think for a vast majority of players, you know, sort of the humble adventurer, you know, incremental power increase, the, the interaction you have with other players in the world around you, the immersion, mm -hmm. The, the character identity you have in Vanilla WoW, I think that's really going to hit home with a lot of people because that's an experience that, just frankly, a lot, of, a lot of retail players haven't had for eight years, a decade. MMO mm -hmm. players, man. When's the last time you had an MMO that you could really sink your teeth into yeah. that felt like an RPG where the world was alive and everything you just said, yeah. incremental power gains? It's the, the entire genre has been absent of that for many years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you might be right in the early days. <clears throat> They're going to hit the grind. What's, when does the grind start? 30? 30 yeah. plus? Yeah. For me, like that. whenever yeah. whenever I think Level back one. on it... <laughs> Level 1, baby. <laughs> like a man! <laughs> <laughs> for, for me... Kill me! <laughs> we bleed! <laughs> I'm trying to think. I, I remember there's a stretch while leveling uh, that I really did not enjoy as much as the other. I think it's like 40 to 50 range it was pretty annoying for me. The 40 to 50 range is kind of annoying for me. I don't, I don't like that one. Because it's like you kind of start getting you, you start getting out of the. I, I just feel like it's kind of a dead spot for me personally, 
uh, also that's because I put the Plague Lands on such a pedestal, right? Because you're going from like Duskwood and STV and all this stuff, and it's like all this craziness is going on into Rathy Highlands, and then you go to the Plague Lands, and I think the Plague Lands as a paladin again, like I, I love the RP, I, I love the Holy Warrior, and I'm a cleansing undead, I'm just smiting people. I think it's great. Um, so I don't know, maybe it's because I hype that up so much, it feels like a dead point for me personally, uh, somewhere somewhere in the forty to fifty range. But that's kind of that's probably the most grindy portion of time for yeah, me personally. I, I remember I remember kept getting to, I remember my friend grinded Zulfarak, hardcore <laughs> as soon as he yeah. hit Zulfarak. Is that a forty five? Yeah, uh, like that. and I didn't. I was. I'm always been very, like I can't help it. Like if it's just grinding a dungeon for experience, I'm not interested. Right. Um, but if I have five quests, that's a really efficient use of my time. And uh, I remember I got one full level from doing the ZF quest. I think you get something like 45 to 46, like straight away. Uh, and then ran out of quests. <sighs> so much about 47 before you get to one, go on to Angoro. I actually, you brought it back for me. This is what I was worried about. You're scientology me. You're bringing me... You're trying to convert me. <laughs> now I'm reliving all these nightmares that I had in vanilla. <laughs> be shaking tonight. They're, they're happy um, nightmares. They're happy nightmares. Yeah. They're not. I, grinded <laughs> up them. I remember grinding a raptor brains for hours. We wouldn't have any of these raptors. are brainless. It makes no sense. Um, the best is the zebra I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, no, I was, I was just saying, there are some really horrible fights that I hope don't catch too many people. It's bound to catch some people, where it does run dry. Um, yeah, and, and it's and nothing, nothing, not everything is for everyone, right? So, mm -hmm. that's that's for sure. No. Mm -hmm. I just don't want people to ruin it for you, you guys more than anything, mm -hmm. right? That's my concern with it, more than anything. Like, I'm happy it's here. I always have never been against it. I, I didn't understand the rage about it, to be honest. I found it funny. <laughs> but, um, I never really got the rage. It's you know, it's no different. So I look at classic as like a, just a different MMO, like Final Fantasy or mm -hmm. 14th. It's just a different game. Like mm -hmm. like I say, you can't compare modern WoW to classic WoW. That's so different. Mm -hmm. They might have yeah. the same class names. I agree. Some, yeah. Have sort of a million other games that exist, right? Right. Uh, so it never was an issue for me. But they've, I, I just don't want them to spoil it. And that's my biggest worry with the whole thing because I know what you guys are. Talking certainly in terms of like this immersion to my class and my character and i actually found leveling so bad in vanilla i hated the level you didn't like it okay oh no um i found it uh, very long and tedious okay especially when i did have to grind out entire levels on mobs uh which is which is i did from like 59 to 60 i had to do that and around 30 to 31 i ended up grinding mm -hmm. which was relatively normal back then you know grinding was part of most MMOs, it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. So, so uh, what? What would you say is your favorite experience in WoW ever? Your favorite time period or activity you did? Um, TBC, but if we're looking at classic, like more directly, I had some of my best, not just WoW moments, but gaming moments in mm. classic WoW. Um, seeing Ragnaros for the first time and he was bugged was amazing. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember when Ragnaros used to pop out and then yeah, disappear and pop out again. Yeah. So I had heard about Ragnaros. I had heard about it. And I remember specifically asking people who had fought Ragnaros. I was like, have you fought Ragnaros? And he was like, yeah. Like it was nothing. Yeah. He was like, 40 people? He's like, yeah. So I'm like, what is it like being in there with 40 people? He's like, it's like being in a cave with 40 people. I don't know what yeah. I was to tell you. you know, he was very blasé about the whole thing. And I was like, oh my God, you're a raider. And looking at him like, like he was God or something. And uh, and I said, so when you're in the room with Ragnaros, how does it happen? And I was like, talk to the guy, and Ragnaros comes out. I don't I don't know what you want me to tell you. And, yeah. I was, and then I saw a video of the Fire Lord coming out and all that. And then one day I was stood in front of him. Mm -hmm. This is gonna happen. And the guy talks to Domo. And Domo starts moving around, and Ragnaros pops out. I was like, <gasps> and then he disappeared. It popped out again. And I was like, well, <laughs> it's a memory for sure. Yeah. It's not yeah. the dream I was hoping it would be. Yeah. Uh, he was booked like that for months, I believe. I think he. 12 months through that book um but it's still a great moment it's still a wonderful moment being there for the, the anchorage gates opening was mm -hmm. fantastic loved that despite the lag and watching all these big raid guilds run right past all those karaji mobs because i expected to be side by side with the champions of the server like we talked about before yeah uh, i expected to be stood side by side sword and shield lol rp with these monsters gamers as far as i consider them at the mm -hmm. time who were about to raid aq and the the gong was rung 
Uh, in fact, the guy who was going to ring the gong got ganked. <laughs> Just, <laughs> by, by, oh, yeah, the guy who rang our gong was called Raffaron. I still remember his name. This is how much of a big moment it was in Vanilla. Mm. I remember the guy's name like 13 years later, and I'd never played with him, never spoke to him in my life. But he was called Raffaron, a priest, and he went to bang it, and my guild master killed him. <laughs> Just, he was about to do it. <laughs> a guy from Liverpool, which is, makes sense to a lot of UK guys, uh, killed him on his Thunder Fury Rogue. And then he got rezzed, and then he went. He banged the gong, and all the gates opened, and everything came out. Big things. And I watched all these big raid kills that are going to do it all for us just walk right past everything, straight into the raid, and let all these mobs gank us noobs. We were still <laughs> waiting to fight with them. They just ran straight into the raid, didn't care about it. We all got hammered into the ground. Oh, uh, but great. What a wonderful moment. Oh, it was great. I was like, they're going, we're going. And they all rushed out, and they were like, they're keeping going. They're not stopping. <laughs> There's an Anubis annihilator stomping on everybody. Yeah. And all these massively geared raiders have just walked right past them. They don't care a little bit. They're not interested in what happens to us outside here. Man. And uh, it was very cool. It was a very cool moment. And I've never experienced much like that in WoW since because they don't run those kind of events. Hmm. Yeah. Did you, you know, w was there any drama surrounding your guys' uh, gong ringing that you know about? Um, no, because we knew, uh, the guy, the, the, the reason I remember the guy's name, Raf, is he was very into being, um, a face of the community. Mm -hmm. I think is a way of putting it. Everything was like, he definitely saw himself as like a daddy of the server, but he was Alliance. And I'm not, I could tell, on the, tell you on the Horde side, everyone thought he was a bit of a dick. <laughs> so no one really <laughs> cared. And actually every time he made, he made these long forum posts and everyone laughed at him on our side anyway. Uh, but no, we helped them uh, do it because we knew they would try extra hard mm -hmm. and none of us really wanted to get involved. Like, we right. did our little bit. <laughs> but the, um, we didn't throw that. I know my guild didn't throw things at build, mm -hmm. uh, low level characters to give us materials and things like that. Uh, so, no, not much drama other than the ganking. The ganking was famous. Because right. he was uh, the the guy who did it. It was called Mortimus. Was very famous on the server for being an asshole. <laughs> um, like that was his thing. He was an, an absolute. And I played with him. He was my guild master. Total asshole. And um, and it would be him. So the whole server was laughing because of course it's him that did it. Because it was all very RP. It was like a, a walk. Uh, to bang yeah. the gong and all this and we were all supposed to be like oh my god <laughs> but we were all laughing obviously. Uh, we thought it was hilarious that's great <laughs> but also little moments i think it's worth mentioning these because i've shown i have a video of one of them is when guilds were going to do big events mm -hmm. generally not just for rp reasons but because it was cooler those guilds which you rarely ever saw you'd see one or two members in iron Forge, oh my god that's you know that's that guild that you heard about because they've mm -hmm. done like the four horsemen or something um if they were going to get Thunder Fury and kill Thunderin, they wouldn't fly to Silithus. They'd go to somewhere like Gadgetzan and they'd ride together. And being out in the open world, I remember being in Tanaris when this guild on mounts, which was a big deal, like epic mounts were a big deal in vanilla, uh, seeing them streaming across the sands, that was a big moment, uh, which I've yeah, never seen in badass. any expansion. It's badass. Since flying mounts came in, it never happens. But to see these 40 or 45 guys streaming across the sand in all this epic gear it was all enchanted and shiny because most of your stuff was dull and broken while you were leveling you know mm -hmm. uh seeing all that happen was like i want to be a part of that uh, and <laughs> that's where i want to be i don't want to be here i want to do that <laughs> and uh those are the memories that really inspire me is like seeing you know guilds doing that kind of thing uh mm -hmm. these big outdoor activities because there isn't really any now world bosses are a gym and things like that. um so i really miss on yeah I, I remember there's all kinds of like so I, I was on Illidan uh, before I transferred to Kel'Thuzad at the it was after the next patch I think so it was towards the end of Vanilla I transferred to Kel'Thuzad but Illidan was like famous for the amount of drama and just random bullcrap that was happening on the server they even ran their somebody ran their own forum for the server called Illidrama it was Illidrama.com so just all kinds of drama everything was up on the boards there and I remember that there was always something huge. Like there's, you had, I'm trying to think. You had you had die on the alliance, Death's Imperial Entourage. They had this guild leader. His name was Grey Rage, and there was like a Grey Rage soundboard that somebody made because somebody on the other guild was like in their vent server for some reason, and just like they, I mean, just recorded just a bunch of the stuff that he would say, and it was hilarious. And I've been looking forever for the Grey Rage soundboard. I can't find it anywhere, but it was like I think Team Ice. Um, 
just it, it, I mean, it, it was great. There was there was so much competition going on on that server, and I remember kind of looking back at the AQ event, and they had planned out a certain time to ring the gong so that whoever had uh, the ch the quest chain done, everybody could go in and kind of ring the gong, and everybody could get their scarab lord, whatever. Yeah. If I remember correctly, this is so long ago. I'm trying to remember this the right way, but I'm pretty sure it was. Piccolo and Z Extreme. I remember these two guys on the server who went and rung the gong or rang the gong early, like <laughs> like six hours early or something like that, or maybe it was twelve hours early, something like that. And they didn't tell anybody, so they just did it, and a ton of people got screwed out of their mounts. And like it was just this whole thing. There was this whole beef and just the kind of stuff that would happen like that in vanilla, where you could affect other people so negatively in such a big way. I don't know. It's it, it's it makes for good stories now. <laughs> but like, yeah, it does. It's it crazy does. It to like think about that. Actually. Yeah. My friend did it recently to a server. By a pure accident, yeah. <laughs> he moved to a server that hadn't had AQ opens. Get them. Out. They had to, these guys have these little communities of people who were all there to get Scarab Lord. Yeah. Anyway, uh, my Greek friend didn't check in with these communities. He just was like, "Okay, where's the server where it's not open yet?" Transferred there, <laughs> went randomly to check it in the middle of the night. Sorry, could bang it. So he just was like, banged it. Uh, and then a few hours later, he thought about it a bit better. And then he went on the forums and said, oh, by the way, uh, <laughs> I banged the gong. <laughs> so, sorry, and left. <laughs> and they, uh, loads of people. And they've been there for weeks waiting for everybody to catch up to make sure they could do it. Uh, yeah. Purely by accident, they did it. But, uh, it's quality stuff like that. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. <clears throat> can you still get Scarab? Or not, obviously not Scarab, but can you still... Do they still roll out fresh servers where you can open the gates or no? I have no oh, idea. I no think this was in... Uh, maybe that was Kata when he did that. It was something around those times. It was a while ago, anyway. It was a while ago. But still a great moment. There was, there was a, lot of, a lot of the Scarab Lords you see today were from Wrath fresh servers. When Wrath came out, they needed a bunch of more servers. Um, there's not many vanilla Scarab Lords around anymore. A lot of them are Wrath boys. Mm -hmm. Wrath okay. babies. Mm -hmm. These Wrath babies infect us again. <laughs> <laughs> What have you guys found, like, uh, so you've raided on classic private servers. Uh, mm -hmm. What's the problem with Nax? Out of curiosity, more than anything. Like, just, everything else they've got wired up correctly, but that's not so much. There's, there's such uh, little documentation, like proper documentation on the raids and, and how everything went. Like, most of the stuff out there on Nax is, is over Wrath of Lich King stuff. So, uh, like, people don't know about, like, boss values and, like, how, how does this work here? How does that work there? Like health, resistance values. Resistance values, I, I think, are probably pretty screwed up in Nax. We've talked about that before. Um, but yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. And even even on the earlier fights, like I know on one one private server, like in Blackwing Lair, they have the the Nefarian has the Paladin class call or the class calls, right? And specifically, okay. the Paladin class call, what it does is it makes all the Paladins in the raid cast Blessing of Protection on Nefarian. So what you could do on the private server is it would put a buff on you. The class call was a buff, not even a debuff. It was a buff that would make you cast Blessing of Protection. So, because it was a buff and not a debuff, all you had to do was right-click the de the buff and just cancel the buff and then, okay, no class call. Like, it was just easy, you know? So there's all kinds of stuff like that because they've, they've kind of spaghetti-coded the game together and found, mm -hmm. like, workarounds to, like, emulate the mechanics. But um, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not perfect, right? And that's why, uh, I mean, that's one of the big reasons why so many people are so excited for Classic, you know? Well, have you found the, I get, my main question was, that was going to work. My main question is, like, how puggable is it? Because I, I get the impression when I was reading for shows and what people are thinking, and it's, it's almost like they believe it's like Canada, it's like some sort of paradise, <laughs> uh, that they're going to be able to go into vanilla and it's going to be like, everybody's the best friend, we're all going to get the UBRS key together and the Anixia chain together and we're all going to high five and we're all going to do this stuff. Um, that wasn't my vanilla experience. It was not that different from today in terms of, you know, inclusivity and exclusivity mm -hmm. uh, in terms of getting content done but obviously more people are used to pugging these days uh so is that what's puggable in this world uh, that you found from the private service have you found it very puggable are we gonna are people gonna be again forced to try and get guilds which i think is a good thing but right those guys who are these we've we've trained well, not we but blizzard has trained a lot of people to be these lone wolf solo rambo types right mm -hmm. Uh, you can't get anything done. <laughs> then that's the complaints we see every day, every single WoW forum that exists. Mm -hmm. So how, yeah. I mean, how are those guys going to translate into the vanilla world? Typ typically, Molten Core, AQ20, and ZG are puggable, then everything else is pretty hard to do mm -hmm. uh, with, mm -hmm. with people that you don't know. You can pug BWL towards the end. Like, if you are if you got guys who are just, like, stacked out and they can just carry, 
but I, I would yeah. say you could probably Chromagus, Chromagus, and Neff start to get really hard with pugs just because people are just like, I don't yeah, know what to do. Know. Yeah. Even Fymar and stuff's got to be difficult, right? Yeah, Coming like people, people don't run out and they just get burned to death. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good times. I can't wait for the suppression room again. Yeah. Uh -huh. Suppression room. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I just think like whenever we did suppression room stuff, like whenever somebody screws up in the in the in the suppression room, it's so apparent. Like you know exactly who screwed up because it's just like they're like sticking out there and they're stuck behind. It's like oh, it's a rogue and he's not he's not op he's not stopping a trap or whatever or he's not disarming a trap. And then it's just all of a sudden the whole raid is slowed down. And everybody's stuck and it just turns into a whole thing. But yeah, suppression room is is really it's not that bad. Once you like, once you get it down, you can just like smoke it. Like you can just go right through it. But if somebody screws up and people aren't on the same page, then it's just like <laughs> you're screwing over thirty nine uh, other people. You know, servers make yeah. you do the achievements properly, right? You have to do the full Nixia check. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, yeah. Stuff, stuff like that's like pretty well documented, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think people are going to be excited for that. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. think so. It's, it's such awesome. An yeah, it's a, such an adventure. Mm -hmm. It really is such a journey to go on. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the thing I, I really miss from the current game. Is those adventures right well, yeah right? i mean that's with those huge. with those attunements even just stepping foot in the raid is an accomplishment of sorts mm -hmm. yeah i mm -hmm. can get in you feel part of a group right you're part, yeah. you're part of this upper group you progress forwards that you can actually get inside like bwl is always pretty easy and uh, mc was pretty easy mm -hmm. but the addixia thing is takes you globally if i remember right it takes you pretty much every corner of the map yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're in the steps. Well, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think. Like you're you're in Winter Spring at one point. You're in you're in Burning Steps and Syrian Gorge, and you're 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 all over the place. At one point, I think you go to. Hmm. Wetlands is one, right? I think Wetlands is for uh, the board, right? Yeah. So wetlands that's the cool one. Yeah. There's yeah, two it's... different attunements. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Depending I on that by the jail. Yeah, yeah, the freeing the guy from the jail and then yeah, yeah. escorting him out and the whole plot twist at the end with, like, the big reveal. And the cool part about it is it was non-phase, non-instant. So if you saw the event going on in Stormwind, yeah. I mean, imagine, like, you're a level 10 noob going to, like, just going to Stormwind Keep and then you see, like, all these dragons and what the hell's going on. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude, I, the dude yeah. I remember seeing that quest go on and... I like ran in there. I was like, I'm Palin. I'm gonna consecrate and just see. I just want to see all the numbers. So I like would run in there and consecrate. So I could see all the numbers. And those guys, they cleave. The yeah. the dragon and they cleave. So I like I ran in there in melee range and they just cleaved me and killed me. And I was like, all right, well, great. Like, it's big sucks. place though. Big place for the paladin. Yeah, <laughs> like, not good. Run and consecrate. That is a vanilla paladin. Yeah. Run away. <laughs> I did consecrate, man. Yeah. Big place. Oh, man. Oh. But I am hyped for it, for sure, man. Mm -hmm. I'm very hyped for it. But How'd I, uh, you feel whenever you first heard the news? Happy for everybody else, mm -hmm. genuinely. Happy for the guys, who, like I said, who fought long and hard. Because that was a... They were loud for a really long time. The petitions... I signed the petition. I did my bit. Uh, because I didn't see a reason not to. I genuinely did. Mm -hmm. um, and just knowing that... You know, how passionate those guys were. It was a crazy passion. Mm -hmm. It was a cause to them. You know what I mean? It was something they rallied behind. Uh, so... I felt super happy for those guys. Mm -hmm. I genuinely did. And that, that's why my biggest fear isn't nobody will play it because I think some people will play it for the end until the end of time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think some people will, will start and never leave vanilla if they have the choice to. I just don't want everyone else to spoil it with like, <sighs> this is why I brought up the guild things. Like, well, I can't do a Nixia. Can we get some sort of queuing system to get people for a Nixia? I have to stand in Ironforge all day looking for a UBRS key. This isn't fun. It's not interesting. Wow. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and if, you know, if it's enough of those guys, Blizzard might go. They will have a vote. <laughs> you know what's sad? You know what's sad? I I'm Hit me. I'm not as fearful of Blizzard as I am of the community itself. And exactly, 100. percent Like the add-ons and stuff like that. Like somebody's gonna make a, a Q add-on. If if it's possible within the API, I'm not a technical guy at all. But if it's possible, somebody's gonna make it. Somebody's gonna make a gear score st style add-on. So, like that's yeah. the biggest thing and, and you gotta imagine blizzard's just like you see we told you you know that reason is why i'm really scared of a player poll system like runescape has because yeah. if, if blizzard starts putting out polls people they're just gonna vote stupid stuff in i really genuinely believe that well like you think so crendor just did a video crendor just did a video where he went on the way back machine and he just like looked at like a screenshot of you know a few few pages of the forums 
And like, it was so funny because like we all played, like we played back in the day. I, I was on the forums all the time, like 13 year old S fan, just like rage typing. Oh, my class sucks. You know, it was stupid, right? But everybody's on the forums complaining about like the stupidest things, like just, just things that I'm trying to think of a good example. There, I, I remember seeing one thing where it was like, they, they were talking about something that's still an issue in BFA today. Or like it's it, it it got flipped like it's like why don't we have this and then it's in the game now and then now people complain about it and it's just so funny because people don't really know what they want they just like they they, they just kind of try and come up with ideas and say like oh, okay well I think this right and they don't think about the repercussions of those actions yet, right? right they're looking for an immediate solution but like what are the repercussions of that mm-hmm. so it's just it's just so funny to me like <laughs> looking back at some of that stuff and it's like yeah like just people people don't really have that kind of foresight. Well, no, people don't care. They want something that'll fix their right now problem. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, yeah. they're not interested in what the repercussions are. They want something that, like the, you know, we've had the plus. Mm-hmm. You can, you can buy Azerite armor now. It's just come out because it fixes the immediate problem of Azerite armor. That you know, that's the kind of thing that people like. Is like a very immediate, quick fix to what they're right. going to get. <laughs> but you're right though. I didn't think about queuing addons and the gear score addon because they're not that hard to put together. Really, you know, you just apply a, va- a value to pieces of armor that you know already exist and you add it up mm-hmm. essentially um yeah. yeah they could be a very big problem you're not wrong uh, that could be an issue i'm not sure about a queuing adding because i don't think anything was queuable in vanilla right you had them stones i don't uh, were they classic where you could click um, the stone you had to go you, stand at the dungeon and click the stone that one yeah you could click the stone and it would put you up in a queue that was there in a later patch i think you could also queue from the innkeepers technically um but yeah i mean i those are just examples. I mean, what I'm scared of the most is just something, somebody discovering some kind of add-on that we don't, we haven't even thought of yet. That's just going to create some massive blow to like the community or how the game worked. And um, you know, I think Stay Safe is he's, he's so much in agreement that he actually rage quit and now is on uh, his phone right now because he broke his computer. Yeah, his I internet just went out. Yeah, I just kicked it right <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Stay Safe, could you could you? Uh, I think you might have your orientation lock on or whatever. If you can turn that off or maybe flip it or something. Yeah. Or invert. If you just want to do this, that's fine too. It looks fine too. I thought oh, it was just side. There you go. Yeah, that's better. That's a lot better. Are we good? Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Right. Yeah, uh, my, my internet went out. I apologize. Yeah, no worries, dude. From it's uh, hey, it's like vanilla's back already. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, this is my FPS and I apologize. What are we doing? Yeah, I, I got a phone call and my dial up died. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> dude, I remember, dude, back in the day, we, uh, it, <laughs> I used our internet all the time. I used our, we had AOL, right? We had AOL, and I used it so much that my mom got mad, and she made my dad get a second phone line. So we had two phone lines, and just one that was basically just the internet line that just ran, like, all day. But it's just funny, like, how, how now most people don't even have home phones back then you had two home phones you had two home lines one for the internet and one to actually use the telephone with it's like hilarious like how it's just like people don't even know about this mm. like kids don't know about this rather no yeah i remember i remember trying to do dungeons um and my mom would get a call on, on the home phone and internet wouldn't die dial up great yep there you go <laughs> i'm loving this phone cam it's the best <laughs> 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 there you go. So whenever okay, we we, we talked about oh, like kind no. of <laughs> yeah, there it oh, is, the dude. Nose. You got the mic, dude. You're good. You got the mic. You're fine. <laughs> Nothing's changed. No. So so you talked about how kind of how you felt, and a lot of people were really excited. And um, whenever you heard the news, but did you ever think that it was actually going to happen at this point, especially after the whole like you think you do but you don't, and it's not just after this that. Moment? No. No, yeah. after that, I was, it was, how could you not be like, Blizzard really doesn't care. Right. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. That's, that, that's how it, I felt. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, again, I'm not for or against it. I wasn't on mm-hmm. either side. Uh, but when they said that, I was like, no, give it up. But they did not, man. Those guys, that's why I was happy for them. Because as soon as that came out, they was like, we're doubling down on this bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. you, you're going to mock us? Is that what we're doing now? <laughs> well, time's worse now. We're going to scream and shout and. We're mm-hmm. going to do everything to make your life a misery until you hear us. Because uh, it was every BlizzCon, wasn't it? It's like classic announcement. Classic announcement. <laughs> yeah. Like, <it's> <laughs> every BlizzCon for the last seven years or something. It's like classic announcement. This is the time. Uh, so, yeah, it was, that was very cool. But I was totally, I 100% thought it was dead. Like, there was no question. I mean, I don't think that anybody can be blamed for thinking that after that response. Yeah. You think mm-hmm. you do. 
but you don't. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I thought it wasn't gonna happen. Man. Yeah, I just I was like, oh, they're they're not interested. I thought maybe, I thought maybe whenever WoW dies, they would think about it. I yeah. thought when it, whenever they were like yeah. thinking about like you know, okay, this is the last expansion, guys. That's whenever I thought they might start thinking about it. But um, mm. that totally caught like, me off guard. I, I wasn't even watching yeah, BlizzCon. I, I was I, playing I Madden. Me, they they yeah. couldn't have been more clear that it wasn't going to happen. Like they, you think you do, but you don't. Okay, that's done. It's over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you had the after Nas shut down, they had the pristine servers post. Remember that? Right. What the hell so it was like, supposed to be? It was just like it was the compromise, right? It was like, well, yeah. we can do this instead and try to appease. But uh, when when they the, after the pristine servers post, I was like, this is, this is just not going to happen. Like, just period, dead in the water. And then they freaking they shocked the freaking world, dude. <laughs> they shocked the world. <laughs> I liked his intro to it as well. It was clear it was him who came out because obviously he had to. He had the stigma with him for shooting it down initially. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wonder if, because you don't know what happens back behind the scenes, right? You don't know whether he's been stood there the entire time just going, this is a waste of time. This is a total <laughs> waste of time. This is going to suck. People are going to rage. They're going to hate it, you know, all the way up to it. And then suddenly the call comes like, well, you're going to go out and announce it. Uh, <laughs> just letting you know that is going to be, it's like, oh, God damn it. Uh, <laughs> God damn it. Uh, maybe that went on, or maybe he was like, okay, let's give us a look. You've no idea. Maybe in the future we'll find that out. Oh, I would love to know. I would love to know whether Mike Morham or whatever called him and was like, "Well, just telling you, you're the one who's going to go out and <laughs> the guy. Yeah. So you better sell it. Uh, <laughs> you better sell it. Because uh, so, he did. I would, he sold I would, it really I would well. Like to you you know, that's that's like the the most. That's the happiest story. Yeah, the yeah. happy story. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. it, it's funny because so we had uh, Nano on the show a couple weeks ago. Nano was the head of quality assurance for Nostalrius, and he was actually mm. in the meeting. Uh, he was one of the five guys that, that flew out to Blizzard uh, headquarters and got a chance to meet with them about, like, legacy servers and, you know, what they learned with NOS and this and that. Uh, and he said the person who was the most, like, excited about the, the prospect of legacy servers was Ian Hazakostas, which makes sense. He was a hardcore raider in vanilla. Yeah. Uh, but then he also said Jalen Brack was actually, like, super on board, too. Just, awesome. like, he, he gave idea. every impression that he was, like, super on board, which is just so funny. Like, we all had this... I, I guess this image of him as like, oh, like this guy hates classic. He's the bad guy. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, wait, maybe he was, maybe he was for classic the whole time or at least mm -hmm. recently. <laughs> you know? yeah. I'd like to know. We would yeah, like to know. Yeah, yeah. It'd be a cool story either way. Yeah. Uh, it would be a cool story either way. But, um, mm -hmm. Hashtag he, he my president. It so well. And yeah. the video was super hype as well. There's oh, no yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, it was Watching good. everything roll back was, was good. really cool. Because I forgot, and I'm sure many of us did, he'd been playing for like 13 years. It's like we forgot how much stuff's actually happened. Like when I saw the wave come back over the statue, mm -hmm, yeah. uh, and I was like, "Oh yeah, there used to be a statue there." <laughs> you know, yeah. there used to be this big thing there, like that. Like watching that video, I was like, "I can't believe this is happening," and <clears throat> it was definitely. Ha I wasn't there for that, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I wasn't actually in the crowd, which I'm really sad about. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to be next. I bet the energy in the room was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. And I just hope it pays off so much. I really yeah. do yeah. hope it pays off. Are you guys all like committed to what you're playing, or are you like experts now? You're like these elitist classic players, right? <laughs> After all this private server <laughs> nonsense, I wouldn't uh, yeah. make us feel bad. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say elitist. Like just because, like I, I think if you know a lot about the game, uh, I think that's fine, right? But it's like, what do you what do you want to do with that knowledge? And and I think one of the big things, and this is one of the things I stress on my streams, and uh, just just whenever I talk about vanilla is. And we talked about it a little bit earlier. The game's a lot more casual friendly than people people make it out to be. And people have this whole image of like, oh, this is like what's viable, right? And it's like, well, you could technically do whatever you want, right? You can play, you can go play a boomkin in a raid. You can definitely play a feral tank in a raid. That's fine. Because I mean, it, the issue isn't like you if you have a boomkin, if you have 39 people in your raid who are ever I mean, you have 39 other people in your raid, excuse me. And then you have a boomkin as your 40th person, and then all of a sudden you can't kill a boss. It's not because of that boomkin. There's 39 other people that that it falls on everybody, right? Like, oh, okay, he did like however x amount less DPS throughout the course of the fight. It's going to be very, very uh, a very rare circumstance where all of a sudden you can't clear content because of it. And uh, as long as you find a guild that's willing to take you, and it depends on the type of guild, right? So if you're running like a high end like speed running guild where we're trying to do molten core in 20 minutes or whatever, then no, you're probably not going to get a Boomkin or a Rep Paladin or whatever. But if you're in a casual guild or even like a progression style of guild where it's like you have people in there and their goal is to complete 
uh, complete the current tier of content in a reasonable amount of time, progress through the current tier of content in a, in a reasonable amount of time, uh, you can still play these other off specs, right? It's totally fine. And uh, I mean, for me, like I play Rep Paladin, right? I've, I've done all the content as a Rep Paladin. I've played with some of the best players in the entire like private server scene, actually. Um, you know, it's, whether it's like progress players, salad bakers players, uh, I've guild led, I've raid led. And it's just like whenever you're in one of these roles, like if I'm going to play Rhett, I don't really have a choice. Like I have to go like 200% effort. I have to go like absolute maximum effort. And um, what does that look like? It's, uh, it's fun. It's good. You know, you gotta like, you gotta go like Elixir of the Mongoose, Greater Arcane Elixir, Flask of Supreme Power. It sucks. You, you, it sucks. Well, you gotta you gotta get all your you gotta get all your consumes. You gotta get all your world buffs. You gotta make sure you're doing all the things properly, uh, in order to pull your own weight, right? I think if people yeah. see that you're 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 doing your job to the best of your ability, and you're a pleasant person to raid with, and you're not hindering the raid, then that that's the most important thing. That's what I think. I guess. I mean, I've. Uh... I've had some bad experiences with aspects of vanilla. Uh, I played Shadow on Trash, <clears throat> uh, and some bosses where we didn't, because you outgear things reasonably steadily in vanilla. Certainly, if you're doing Molten Core Farm and Blackwing Lair. Uh, but we did have a guy who tried Feral Tank in Nax Ramus Leather, and was still just—I can tell you as his healer, it was just a waste of time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, that guy really tried. He was dead passionate, and we gave him the chance. Like, no, there's been changes. We can do this. We can do that. Uh, but we even had another tank because of the way deep. So you used to just wear like four items, but Nax Gear had so much defense on it, you could do that and still be defense capped. Mm -hmm. So you'd have like no pants on, no shoes, things like that. <laughs> and still be tanking better than that feral tank like quite easily. Um, I mean, I, I, I always found that the off specs were really good on fights when they lasted about a minute or so. Like, and you know, until the Boomkins ran out of mana and the Shadow Priest kind of ran out of steam. I played with one of the best geared Shadow Priests in the world. We had him. We used to call him a Shadow Mage. He was kind of like a, a young a young lad, uh, but he was always looked at as like the cutie. And he would just run dry, like, all the time. Yeah. And he'd do amazing damage, but on longer fights, you look at your Hoohorans and your twins, yeah. where the fights are getting on in time, they just disappear, and they, would just, they did become like, what's the point? You know what I mean? There's like, this is really becoming a problem. Yeah. Um, well, the good thing with like Shadow Priest specifically is like the the shadow damage buff is so huge for mm -hmm. for the warlocks in the raid, and even if you have other shadow damage procs and stuff, like it it ends up being a and uh, ends up being a, a pretty big like uh, bonus to the DPS, the overall DPS of the raid, and people have just found out better ways to play their character since then. Like even even me, like I, I've found out different things to do with Ret since uh, since I played in vanilla, right? And then it kind of goes back to what I was saying before. It's like there's certain things that I there's certain things that I've done, and I'm like that's not like that that's not right like on the private server. Uh, for example, one of them, uh, like people are leveling, people have been like trying to level a paladin right on private servers, and, and I've talked about this on my streams before, uh, and I said this is probably something that's not going to be in classic, but people switch to reckoning. Uh, they switch to reckoning halfway through, and then basically they sit, they get a they get a stack of reckoning, and then you want to sit basically to stack up reckoning, and then you can level faster yeah. if mobs are hitting you. But the problem is, is, and this is how I remember it as well, Reckoning didn't work in PvE if you sat. Um, it didn't work in PvE if you sat down against like a, just an, any NPC or whatever. But it worked in, the same thing in PvP, it would work if, if people crit you with abilities. But I'm not sure if it worked with auto attacks in PvP, I can't quite remember. But I know for sure it worked with abilities. Yeah. yeah. So You'll it's like little, it's like little stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's like little stuff yeah. like that that people like go back and they like talk about the stuff and it's like a lot of people like they just don't know you know they just don't know and they share this information or like they, they like to oh like I, I figured this thing out and it's like yeah but that may or may not be in classic like who knows you know I, I think yeah. stuff like that yeah. like it could get nerfed like big time you know yeah I'm sure a lot of stat weights have changed as well because people I don't think people really started understanding powerful hit rating until TBC was when it really became a big deal like mm -hmm. it was kind of important in vanilla, but the you know having hits on your gear certainly for some classes was crazy mm -hmm. good. And people discovered in CBC. I'd be interested to see what the gearing side of it looks like now, especially with some overpowered older items like low level stuff because they made some crazy items while you were yeah. leveling up, some really crazy things that made no sense with how how much budget they were given. Yeah, uh, I, I would be interested to see whether you know this because I always remember the trinket from. Uh, the hinterlands, uh, the hordes got it. It was the you know if you did the tr epic elite troll area, it was a level forty five trinket that had hits on it, 
and it was utterly broken because you could hit mobs then that were like four or five levels above you quite easily with that thing um items like that rune of the guard captain that's the one um i'd be interested to see whether people over the years have dug down so far to find crazy things like that that are actually super over budget but low level stuff because vanilla was full of that kind of stuff mm -hmm. see whether that yeah. makes it into yeah. the live version have we got to see people farming things I think definitely, definitely people's <laughs> understanding of pre-raid BIS and just BIS in general and itemization is, has enhanced a lot over time. There's been a lot of theory craft. Mm. I mean, imagine theory crafting a game for 15 years. Imagine theory yeah. crafting Old Deer for 15 years and how, how <laughs> easy it would be, right? Yeah. It's like speedrunning, right? Those guys have been speedrunning games. Exactly. Yeah. Times, <clears throat> but it's still people finding stuff in like Mario's, which is crazy. <laughs> like even to this day, they're finding stuff in Mario. Yeah. And yeah. then you know, you've got a game full of stuff like that. But there are definitely yeah. aspects of vanilla I'm not looking forward to, and uh, those are the things that have put have put me off long term playing of it. Uh, huh. you know, gold acquisition, farming herbs, that kind of stuff, which I really got tired of in the way it was done in vanilla. Um, riding around, you know, uh, winter spring, riding around all those areas. Uh, repair costs in general, I felt like I had, I almost bought gold to cover repair costs. <laughs> Almost, because I just couldn't keep up with the amount I was playing. I just went to the game and there was no gold to be gotten. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how that's addressed currently because I didn't farm Tears hand over and over again. All right. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, and people have found out like a lot more like uh, different like farming methods and stuff over time too. Like people have just gotten better at it overall. But I, I had the same <laughs> problem. I, I, I've just period like I, I just had the exact same problem. Like I remember multiple times where I would have to borrow gold for repairs. I. I wouldn't respec. <laughs> I had to come up with a, just just a hybrid spec for me to raid and not raid. Like if I had to heal and raids, I, I played like pre one point nine. I think I played like seventeen holy and thirty three ret. So I had like blessing mm -hmm. of kings, and then I would deep in the ret tree. I had blessing of kings, and then I was able to heal with uh, with the early holy talents. That's just how I played. And then even later on, I, I'm pretty sure I uh, even later on, I think I might have gone like twenty one holy thirty ret at some point. Just because I, I didn't, I couldn't afford a respec. You know, fifty gold yeah. respec two, and then from another fifty gold every single week whenever I wanted to PvP or raid. Uh, so I just as an officer, we had a system of clearing people to respec for the weekend. Yeah, because <laughs> if we wanted to do AQ twenty or ZG, uh, certainly the healers they would all have a list of who was allowed to respec for the weekend. Because the last mm -hmm. thing you wanted to do was respec and then respec back a couple of hours later because it was too damn expensive. Uh, so we that's how we handled it is we had a list of people and they put down like i'm gonna farm this weekend so i need to be able to respec and i need to stay that way for a couple of days and that was the only system we could find to actually make it work and they'd have to stagger it otherwise no none, none of the rest of the guild could play right yeah yeah which sort of led to a lot of someone in chat said it uh lazy multi-specs which are sort of you know they can work but they're suboptimal for a lot of things but you can use them for a lot of things um, I think in today's climate, like that might have been okay in vanilla, but I think in today's climate where gamers are really a lot more min maxi, I think you'll see a lot less of that on classic servers. You think we'll see full prop warriors? I, 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 I think full they'll be playing whatever, yeah. whatever spec is best. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's because. It just our arms off Fury and then up to last stand. And that's what it used to take. So there was basically, yeah. <laughs> you you have people who go deep prot for tanking, and then you have people like, let's say you want to go with like a TPS build once your gear gets good enough, and you try and fury tank. And one of the big things with fury tanking is uh, having your world buffs and all your stuff. The big problem with fury tanking, especially in like the early tiers, uh, I think BWL is whenever you can like, okay, like let's let's do this like legitimately. If you have your main tank going for a heavy TPS build and he's, and he's deep fury for it, uh, if he dies at any point and he loses his world buffs, he becomes like a, a piece of paper, like he's super oh, really? super weak. Yeah. yeah, and then and then later on, like you can do Nax and you can have a Fury tank the thing if he's like super geared out and stuff, and it's just fine. But same thing, like even if they lose their world buffs, it's it's kind of frustrating. Are you talking about Fury spec, but still using a, sh a shield or whatever, mm -hmm. or just like DPS tanking? No, no, uh, like basically, be, like wearing like full wrath and and having your yeah, yeah. elementium bulwark and all that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, we had some of Death Witch tank connect here because they couldn't stand stand stance it, <laughs> <laughs> so they went fury so they could use Death Witch uh, when she landed. Make sure you block it. It worked <laughs> surprisingly. It worked just just fine in order to make that happen. Uh, yeah. But all the warriors I knew were arms with. Even our main tanks were arms with just up to last stand, and that's how they tanked. But I even I'm going to be a warrior in vanilla. 
I'm going to be a gnome warrior. He's going to be popping. Uh, he's going to be 10 out of 10. And yeah. I want to be full prop. Yeah. Uh, because I, I never did that in vanilla. My warrior was scumbag arms and then scumbag fury. Yeah. Uh, but I loved tanking in vanilla because it really mattered. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Your tanks were a big deal, and I really enjoyed pushing myself in that role. Mm -hmm. uh, so this time, that's that's what I'm going for because I I love the no more. He's right. my best friend. He's my best friend. Uh, so that's that's where I'm going for it because I want I want tanking to be a challenge for me again. Like it's not mm -hmm. been a challenge for me for a long time. It's, you know, there's a limit to what I can do, uh, and certainly in the modern WoW, it's like you know, you count. Can you count to three? You can probably tank most boss. Right. <laughs> so. Um, one of the things specific to, to no warrior tanks that I just remembered, uh, so taking Fire Maw, we talked about Fire Maw earlier. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the strategies for fighting Fire Maw is you basically have your tank sit in the corner and, and you kind of pin yourself against the wall. You have Fire Maw facing you and then your DPS will go around the corner and then you have your healers and you're ranged uh, at an angle to where they can see you, but or at least your healers are at an angle to where they can see you, but they're not in line of sight of Fire Maw so they don't get hit by the pulse. Yeah. What I've heard is with no warriors, because they're so small, they actually can't stand at that part. So you have to change your strategy if you have a no warrior tank. So you might be uh you might be stuck out of that fight a little bit <laughs> because you're too short and you're gonna be under the ledge. Look. I ain't sitting out of any fight. <laughs> right? This discrimination against no warriors will stop. It'll stop right now. Uh, Otherwise I'll log a Tauren tank and I'll do things that no other tank can do. Uh, Maybe oh, honestly, some crazy stuff on my tour. Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe get an elixir of giant strength. Maybe that'll help you a little bit. Or not giant strength of uh, uh, what's it called? What's the level eight? Oh, I don't know. The 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 one the potion that makes you bigger. I can't remember. Yeah, I'm blanking. I'm blanking. Yeah, I'm blanking. Elixir of giant growth. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's, like it's giant growth. Yeah, yeah, it's giant growth. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Anyway, if I get stuck in the water, that's my problem, and I'll deal with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but don't laugh at me. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Well, I I do like. Uh, no, I'm being a no warrior. You've not changed my mind. <laughs> Go Torin. How many how many people have you had on the podcast? No one has said horde. No one. It's so sad, man. It so feels bad. Um, Nixium. Nixium said horde. Nixium oh, yeah, going horde. Nixium well, he's not. I think it was fifty fifty still. I think yeah, he was fifty fifty. That's true. That's true. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Why though? Why would you be horde? We're all horde forever now. We got to play alliance for this round of PTR testing because in eight point one there's alliance only bosses mm -hmm. but only boss mm -hmm. so we had to switch to alliance. My whole guild was like we're changing to alliance. It's just so much fun. This is it was so it was such a novelty to be able to play alliance characters. Because if you're in the raiding scene, really you're horde, like in modern game, right? Mm -hmm. I mean you can look at the the top one hundred leaderboard for Cahoon and it's really sad. It's yeah. really sad is I think it's was it like about like eighteen alliance guilds now and the horde have been done for a week or so. Mm -hmm. And it's now, the, the the freedom is there to be alliance plus dwarf priests which are big mm -hmm. right we get the dwarf priests uh fear ward i need it because apparently i can't tank fire more so i want fear ward. <laughs> <laughs> at least you had something else priests, yeah <laughs> yeah i want to do that but uh i was horde all the way i've been horde forever i was alliance for a very brief period during carter mm -hmm. uh but other than that, i've been horde for 13 years i, I am more than in, in, so, and vanilla seems like a perfect time to do it. And I think there's probably a lot of other players are in the same boat because the yeah, horde, yeah. <laughs> the mm -hmm. horde, are generally have an easier time now in game. Mm -hmm. So mm. what do you what, what do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish with your with your no warrior? Like you, you say, you want to tank. Is there is there any like hallmark kind of milestone things that you want to you want to do on your gnome? Or he never going to take the radar out of me, man. I'm just clear next when it's ready. There you go. And, uh, That'll be me probably done with it, to be honest with you. That's that's what I'm looking to do. And probably mm -hmm. take uh, the stream through it. I'll probably do a stream guild um, and take them through it. See how much I can remember from raid leading that stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Without trying to research it. <laughs> as blind as I can. Uh, but I, I, it's hard to forget that much, you know, that much stuff. But uh, that's what I'm looking to do. Nothing more, nothing less. Is uh, clear the raids, have fun, uh, do it along the way. But after that, am I going to farm Timbermore weapons? I'm not gonna. Yeah. So you're not gonna. You're not gonna go full completionist mode. No, I, I haven't done that in any version of. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. That, mm -hmm. My completion is the raids. Like that's my completion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't farm transwell. I don't do any of that stuff. I don't farm mounts. Right. All I like doing is I like beating the hardest content the game has to offer, and beyond that, I'm happy. I'm happy with the game as it is, and mm -hmm. then I focus on things. 
or other games, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Am, am I going to be doing all the extra stuff? No. I did it a bit. I did it already as well, and that's the yeah. thing that I I've said all, all along the way about. I already played it from its very start till its death. Like I've had my fill of it. I'm not. There's nothing I missed out on. I did everything I wanted to do at the time. So it's not like I can look back at it and say, this is something I didn't get to do the first time round, and now I have to go for it. That doesn't exist with me. Everything I wanted to do in vanilla, I've done in vanilla already. Mm. Uh, so that's part of why I wasn't like, oh my God, it's coming back because there wasn't something there for me to get. Um, it's going to be fun, definitely. But in terms of living there, you know, and being the new home, no, yeah. not really. But that's okay. I don't think that has to be the case for a lot of people. I'll be a retailer... Is that, that's a dirty word to some people. And that's what I about <laughs> You've come to the I'm wrong on. neighborhood, man. <laughs> yeah, I've walked into a bad street where, you know, yeah. I could be a retailer. Um, but yeah, I'm fine. That's that's my goal, is to take my stream and my viewers and we'll, we'll make a guild, we'll have fun with it, we'll get what we want for it. But for what I really want is just raid completion. I'll be happy with that and that'll be it. And if they do seasons, maybe we'll do it again and go fast. Maybe I want to collect the whole Dreadnought set, actually, because I didn't get to do that because I was a priest. And mm -hmm. I love the Dreadnought set. So my gnome might have to get Dreadnought. That might be a challenge I set myself. There you go. Do you think <laughs> it'll be hard to full clear next Rambus and everything else without it sort of becoming your home? Are you afraid? Are you afraid of liking it too much? <laughs> uh, I'm not, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm not afraid of it. I'm not afraid of it, if that's the case. Certainly with the way DFA <laughs> is right now. Um, mm. Then no, that's fine. Like, if I... If I I, I play whatever I want. As, you know, my, my stream will tell you. It's like I wake up and like, I don't play that. I'm doing something else. Mm -hmm. um, so if I wake up and I was like, I really want to go and farm Crusader Orbs today. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I want to do. That's what I'm going to do. So that could happen. I'm not afraid of that happening, uh, but I'm certainly not doing the next 13 years again. <laughs> I'm like, right, right TVC's coming. Enough. Let's get hype yeah. again. Yeah. Let's yeah. do that. Uh, I can't imagine that happening. I'll be honest. Can't, until the rating's done. I tend to go full focus until the goal is done. And then I, I stop. It's like, I yeah, like know. when Mythic Cahoon died, I didn't log in for two days. Like, I, was done. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, like, I missed out on my Mythic Plus caches and all that stuff. I just was like, ah, you know, I finished. <laughs> the uh, game's finished. I'm done. Do you uh, see a situation? Do you see a situation to preach where, hypothetically speaking, if Classic is like very successful and defies expectations, do you see a situation where Blizzard looks at the modern game and is like, okay, what are we doing wrong and do we pull elements from classic and de design philosophies from classic and implement them in the modern game do you see that happening um it's hypothetical I've, obviously yeah yeah i think it would be easier to build on the classic than try and change the modern backwards uh -huh. they could next expansion i certainly wouldn't expect it in bfa um it's that's a huge question because it's like which elements how do they affect that game I think they might get some wake-up calls. Like I said, um, I'm not sure if we were on the show at the time, but the when Method streamed the Mythic race, it was one of the biggest things that's happened for a while in a really long time. Mm -hmm. And it should, hopefully, with the takeaway from that from Blizzard, is people do actually really care about this stuff. Like, Although you might have statistics showing that people aren't trying it, they care about it and they're interested in it. And that was obvious from that event. Whether mm -hmm. they'll look at it and go, phasing's actually really bad. The biggest takeaway we're getting from this vanilla classic experience is that people love a community right. and they love being on one server. Even if it's causing some performance issues, they love it. We need to think, yes, this phasing technology, technology is great for performance. It's helped loads of people, but people prefer it the other way. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. as simple as that. Not everybody wants the new shiny trainers. They prefer the old comfy sneakers sometimes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if they take stuff like that, that could be good. That could be really cool. Because those are the elements that have gone too far, I think. I think the technology has gone way too far now. It used to be convenient. Now it's just an, an annoyance and lonely. And it's not, you've, you know, you're in your own sandbox. It's not very fun. Mm -hmm. And if they, if, they, if they take elements from that away, that could be good. That could really be good. Um, but whether they, they'd probably have to wait a long time to implement. Slow changes. But certainly for a lot of the guys who play Steady yeah. changes, delicate yeah. little touches, because goes too far, then it's out of time. Yeah, like, yeah. and we, we've talked about it before, too. Uh, I, I've mentioned, like, how I do think it's, you know, and you, you mentioned this, too. It's basically, like, they're two different games. They're really hard to compare. Um, there, There is, you know, some overlap of people who like to play both, but they are two different games with two separate, like, audiences of people that they're trying to sell the game to. Um, so it'll, it'll, it'll be real interesting to see how it goes. Uh, I think that... Drawing inspiration from something in classic uh, may not be a bad idea, but 
it could hurt one audience of the game pretty poor or pretty badly. It could it could be a pretty poor situation um, if you were to take something away that maybe the majority of people like that are you know BFA fans, but they're not classic fans or vice versa. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of how I feel about all that. Yeah, it could just completely separate people, mm-hmm. which is a genuine fear because I mean, but I think the natural way it's going to go is some people will play the classics, some people will play retail, and some people will play both. And that's the way it's going to work. I don't think uh, it's... I, th- I think people like, think things happen in black and white, where it's like, everybody who goes to classic. Everybody's <laughs> going to retail. That's... No. <laughs> it's going to be people who do that, and then it's going to be people in the middle. How many shift to either side? I think... I think uh, I guess. I think, you know, people will shift between the two at will. You know, I'm playing this mm-hmm. one, then I'm playing this one. Uh, unless they find... This is the interesting thing, and I would like this to happen, kind of, <laughs> is... The more that people play classic, the more they're going to find a community in a home. Things mm-hmm. are going to happen. They're going to be part of events that actually matter the next day that happen on the server, right? Server yeah. events, somebody will do something, and it matters the next day. People are still talking about it the next day. They're talking about it in general chat. Mm-hmm. And the next day, they're carrying it on with that. Once that starts happening, people might start gravitating more towards classic because they're in on the story, they're in on the joke, they're in on the community situation. Mm-hmm. And that's something people crave. They crave to be part of the inside of the circle, right? They don't want to be on the outside, which is where they are in BFA because not anything matters within a second of it happening, right? Nobody knows about it. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing that could re- be a real thing is that when something happens, it doesn't matter what it is, something happens it stays there and it becomes the stories we were telling earlier on that were to our server. That was our server's tale and story. Mm -hmm. And a lot of servers in vanilla had their own stories and tales and things like that. And the RP servers have them actually. Uh, The RP servers have these little things because they're enclosed. They're still in this enclosed environment and they still have that going for them. And I get that. I do a show called Drama Time. The stories they get there are all guild uh, realm drama stories. They happen amongst a whole bunch of people all together, and they're still living that and enjoying that. Yeah, that I think could you're be right. a big thing. Mm. That stuff still happens on RP servers, and it's very unique. Uh, outside of RP servers, I feel like a lot of people that didn't play these older versions of WoW, they don't even know what they're missing, and they're going to try mm. it out. And I think they're like, th- there's no other game on the market right now that fosters, encourages, necessitates, incentivizes this community interaction and, and, and teamwork um, to the extent that Classic WoW does, and, and drama, and and gossip and like you said in trade you have people talking about the next day i think a lot of people are going to fall in love with it once they, once they get a taste of it i think you're right i yeah. think so I, and it can be something as simple as some guy got kicked from ubrs one because he's terrible right like we said there's going to be the champion all right oh you cut out you cut out a little bit there the bed. oh sorry i'm just saying it could be some simple thing like you were part of a ubrs run that mm-hmm. fell apart because of uh let's it's like stay safe it was terrible he turned out to be the worst player i've ever seen in my life it's true he uh, sabotaged yeah. the whole run but then yeah. that comes back to trade chat right it's like don't invite safe stay safe why what mm-hmm. happened and this story's unfolding mm-hmm. but the next day it's still the same thing because preach is now in the chat and he was there as well did this actually happen it's happening all the time in classic uh, mm-hmm. i used to go into iron forge which was i hope iron forge becomes the main city again by the way yeah, I think so. Yeah. I hate Stormwind. It's garbage. I <laughs> thought so much better. Stormwind <laughs> is just annoying. Um, <clears throat> I think without flying, I think we're a good thumbs up for Ironforge going to be the home. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. I want that to happen. Uh, but yeah, then, the, you know, people go, joining Ironforge was like joining um, a, a, a party of people. Yeah. Because people yeah. stay there all day, especially the trade skills we're talking about. Yep. The trade skills are there all day. They're gossiping amongst each other because they're all part of this community that lives yeah. inside the Ironforge area. Um, that's what could keep people coming back because, oh, it's cool yesterday. I was in Ironforge and this was popping off. Going to go see what's happening. Uh, nobody's saying, got to log into Boralus today because, you know, somebody's asking for selling gold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> somebody's selling gold. I want to catch up. So you- yeah, there he is. Still selling that gold. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then you get the cross server messages where people used to go and die and leave messages for servers. Mm-hmm. You remember that? You used to spam all the level ones and p- kill the skeletons to write messages to different servers. Mm. Don't get that anymore, but that's a vanilla thing. And you used to work it like, what's going on here? You know, yeah. and, and you have yeah, the cross realm rivalry, uh, which is always cool. And I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, mm. I, I remember like one of the, whenever they introduced cross realm was 1.12. They introduced cross realm 1.12 and 
I, I remember thinking it was kind of cool at first where I could like see people from other servers in my battlegrounds and stuff, but I thought I felt like that was kind of one of the first steps in uh, in terms of getting starting to lose like the flavor of your server and the rivalries on the server just a little bit. And and I see why they had to do it, especially like going to the, like the battle group system and for the arenas. Like I see why they did that and uh, it kind of ended up being like a necessary evil for some servers where we, we just have like massive population imbalance and you'd have people sitting in queue for 20 minutes and then you'd have another group of people like instant queuing or you'd have yep. the other faction instant queuing. So I kind of see where it went, but like I, I just cross realm is something that I, I didn't uh, I didn't particularly enjoy. There's pros and cons to it, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're saying, it's not black and white. Because uh, you were right, there were people who were waiting for, for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour. Mm -hmm. And then the other team was like straight in. Mm -hmm. And it just made no sense. You know, it was ridiculous. Right. But at the same time, a ser the server only Alterac Valley that I got to experience a lot, because I was on Alakir Realm, which was massively popular, the server only at AV was a very big deal because they knew when certain players were finishing work and joining the AV battle. And the people mm -hmm. would try and get that honor before those players joined because they were going to shred everyone to pieces. So I think on uh, Alakir, we had a warrior called Joey. Uh, Joey was a high warlord, uh, or Grand Marshal, and I was on the Horde side. And you would see in the messages, Joey gets home from work soon, we need to finish. <laughs> because Joey would come in with four healers and shred everyone <laughs> to pieces. Uh. You know what I mean? That's what Joey would do. He'd come in and he'd just tear the place asunder on his own with his four healers and... That's something you can't get anymore because Joey's coming, you know. Um, that happened quite a lot, and also the Alakir got Alakir got a name for itself for being like the, one of the toughest PvP servers going. But I think that was part of the cross realm. But then again, do you want moments like that where you know Joey's coming, or do you want to wait forty five minutes to get into a Warzone mm -hmm. Gulch for twenty honor or whatever it was you got at the time? Because you didn't get a lot, and you had to farm rep as well to get the gear. <laughs> yeah. Right. Which one do you prefer? Right. That's the question. Which one? Do you... And those are vanilla. Said you might not like it, but it's probably coming because it is a vanilla functionality. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, that, and that's that's something we've talked about too. Like it, it just might end up being a necessary evil or something. If whether they implement it from the beginning or they they play around with it and then see, ah, uh, you know what, we got to do this. So it'll be mm -hmm. it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see. Unless they just have one server. But yeah. Probably not likely, right? I would expect two or three at least. Yeah. I think there's gonna be a lot. Like I, I think I think at least at least however many they had at launch, because I I think well like anytime you have anything that's hyped up like this right I think anytime you have at least however like, sorry, whenever you have something hyped up this much, no matter what it is you have this big spike. There's gonna be so many people interested in logging in for the first time and just seeing like oh like what's going on what's this all about and then there is gonna be the drop right it doesn't matter what it is there is gonna be a big drop after the initial spike. Um, you know, BFA may have, may or may not have been like that, right? We don't know because we don't know sub numbers. But, um, but we cars. Yeah, we cars. Yeah, what do yeah. you think about that, by the way? Do you think it was legit? I didn't think nothing. Yeah. Didn't think no <laughs> Ask someone else. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I, was yeah, it that's... spy? <laughs> I yeah, know but... who you are. <laughs> it's Ian has a Custis all along. Uh, <laughs> Veil his mask. Yeah. yeah. I think, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, just, I just think it'll be interesting to see how that gets played out. Uh, real quick. I hope they force merging, don't you? Oh, sorry. To yes. No, no, yeah, for sure. For sure. I, I think I think merging would be a lot better solution than... Uh... Don't even ask. Just do it. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm sick of this irrational... I, I mean, I find it irrational. It's irrational of your whole... You know, like you were born there or something, and, <laughs> and these marauders are coming to burn down your house. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's just the name you've clicked at the start, right? Right. Just merge, merge the realms. Don't have it messed up like that. Yeah, it'll it'll be it'll be really interesting how they how they actually approach that situation. Uh, real quick, uh, guys, if you haven't already, please uh, feel free to follow tips, stay safe, preach. Uh, you can see all our handles under the cameras right there below, and, and myself if you haven't followed this channel yet. Uh, we do do class cast every Sunday. Usually we do it a little bit later, but you know we, we did a little we did it a little bit earlier uh, this week. You know to to help out our, our friend preach here, and uh, also. We are going to do Q&A here soon. We are going to do Q&A here soon. So if you guys tweeted us with hashtag ClassicCast, that's what we'll be searching up. If you guys have any questions uh, for us to talk about, any questions you have for Preach, uh, we'll get to that too. Uh, also, one last thing. We have the winners of our last giveaway for three BlizzCon virtual tickets. And they are Sampha, Discala, and Fiot. So that is the last... Uh, BlizzCon virtual ticket giveaway that, that we're doing. Uh, I will email you guys uh, 
probably by the end of tonight so we can kind of start getting some stuff situated so we can get you guys virtual tickets and uh i mean this is just something that we kind of did because we we feel like the a, a large portion a very large portion of the classic community has uh really kind of rallied behind us and what we've been doing with classic cast and we've been trying to think of ways that we can give back uh you guys have been incredibly supportive of everything we've been doing with classic cast and uh, everything's been going really well and we're just so excited for blizzcon we're so excited for this demo we're so excited for <clears throat> for what's going to come so just big thanks to you guys just we're, we're looking at ways that we can give back to you guys and even um we're, we're looking at doing some stuff as well um possibly like you know with some other content creators uh just people who it, it doesn't necessarily matter like how how big or small somebody is what really matters most is uh, how you treat other people, right? Whether whether they're up or down, right? You know, being being the same kind of person. And we've had a lot of people uh, who have been supportive of us, and you know, maybe kind of we we have some people in mind, but doing some kind of maybe stream team or something. You guys are interested in classic content. There's some other smaller streamers and stuff that are uh, interested in classic and are and are going to be streaming classic as well. So you guys can maybe just have more people to watch through us. Uh, I think we we've been talking about that. And we think that's something that would be really cool. So. Yeah, there's a lot of people that have that are smaller streamers on Twitch here or make small YouTube channels that make classic content. We'd love to work with you guys or do collabs or chill on Discord during Classic WoW or be on a stream team, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, and, and we, we have some people in mind, but that's just kind of like a heads up for uh, for you guys watching and you guys have been really, really supportive of what we're doing so far. So, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, um, if you guys have not already, again, follow us. Uh, follow Preach at Preach LFW in the Twitch on Twitch. I, I posted in the chat. And tweet right now, hashtag ClassicCast. Tweet at us, and I will answer your questions on Twitter as well as in the chat uh, here pretty soon. I got a question for Preach real quick. Mm-hmm. When does Classic come? Oh, uh, I mean, how committed am I? <laughs> Go all in, dude. Uh, I don't Balls think that's far deep, away. Dude. I don't think that's yeah, I don't. I think maybe. Uh, uh, let me make you irrationally hyped. Uh, <laughs> Christmas <laughs> Day. No way. No. I know. I have it on good authority. <laughs> Christmas Day. You gotta be kidding no. me! No, don't do this to me. Yeah, dude. early next year, I think. Uh, early okay. next year. Yeah, I think I like, uh, that'd be special. My, an- my yeah. anniversary is on December twenty sixth. I'm like, hell no, dude, dude. It sounds like you're divorced oh, on December twenty sixth. Oh wow! Like, you goofed yeah. up that day. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, man. What do, you, what do you think we'll hear at BlizzCon? Oh, I am waiting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because we, we, we talked am... about this. I, I don't know if we'll get a release date at BlizzCon. I, I think it might be a little bit too early to give us that. But I think if they do uh, some sort of extended testing period, like a beta or alpha or whatever, uh, which I think is likely for multiple, you know, for a number yeah, of reasons. Yeah, they've rebuilt the game. They're going to do yeah, it. Yeah, they're going to do it. Yeah. Um, I think they might kind of hint at a, a time frame for that. And I think after that happens, it's not going to be too long out of uh, uh, too long after that where, where we'd probably get the release. Yeah. I wouldn't put a lot of people saying 100%. I don't 100% anything. You know? <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> That's not going to work out well. <laughs> uh, it would be nice. Uh, I expect some sort of beta announcement, something along those lines. We'll see how the demo goes. Um, I think they'll be big about the demo and see what they've got in store for us. What else have they got to say about it, though? That's the thing. Like, mm-hmm. We'd like to know what patch they're starting on, right? We know the foundation patch, but what is the content cycle they're starting? Right. We, going, yeah. we talked about it before. They're going like pre Moradon, post Diamol, everything. Right. What are they going to do? Um, personally, I hope it's from the start and then gradually build on it. Right. What would you uh, speculate would be on the demo, do you think? Uh, I would imagine, what, Goldshire Westfall, something like that. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. I, think, I don't think much more than that, to be honest. They they said two zones, and when yeah. they said two zones, I I think that they were talking about uh, I think they meant like one zone for each faction. That's what I think. Okay. Uh, so, so probably. Westfall, well, Barons? maybe maybe that's like we, we talked a little bit about Westfall and Barons. The thing is with Westfall and Barons, and I, and I don't know the Barons that well, right? I was mostly an alliance guy, but with Westfall, like there's no class trainers, right? Now that that could be an easy fix. They just dump them in there for the sake of the demo. Um, and they talked about being able to put some talent points in. I think there's a pretty good chance that Stay Safe brought this up, actually. Stay Safe brought this up, and it's it's so iconic, right? Whenever you're creating a, a human, 
and then you see the the gates of Stormwind and, and the whole cinematic that comes out. Sensei was talking about this a few times or uh, a few class casts ago. Uh, I, I think that that's something that's so important uh, for the sake of a demo. Just having those intro cinematics and starting at level one, and maybe having the intro zones where you just have L1 Forest and maybe you just have Durator. And they just say, you know what, these zones are walled off and you can just play however, however far you can get without, you know, until you can't get any more XP. Like every mob's great to you or something like that. All the, all the monsters are great to you. Maybe that, that, that's what I think. Good start. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, I mean, the, if you haven't done a lot of testing, um, then it doesn't matter about things like class trainers and stuff. They just stick them in there. Um, yeah. And any class, it, just because, you know, traditionally, you know, a night elf starts in Darnassus or whatever. Uh, that's not the really what will happen on a test realm. They'll just stick you wherever, you know. <clears throat> right. So, I mean, I think they do want to make a good impression. I don't think Dura's choice holds right. They might even use Morgul or yeah. certainly uh, Tirisfar, Um if they do want to do that. But I do agree, like, the entrance into the oh, you could be a really again. nice finish. Oh, sorry. I don't know why. Yeah, I, mean, I wonder what's going on. Yeah. It might be Discord. It might be your Discord uh, voice activity yeah. might be a little bit high the threshold yeah it could be um but i that's a i like the idea i think they might mm -hmm. want something meatier though those zones uh, are a little bare mm -hmm. and that's all i think that maybe the, the demo wouldn't last very long that's why i think more barons ish mm -hmm. westfall ish there's a bit more meat on the bones mm -hmm. um maybe they'll include dead mines in there you know yeah. that would be nice i think something that would be awesome lines. if they mm -hmm. put whaling caverns and dead mines in i think i exactly. think that would be it would be so cool if they did that and you actually could get a group together and do a dungeon that'd be the coolest thing yeah. That'd make more sense to me than just the starter zone. Even in vanilla, the starter zones didn't last that. Yeah, maybe and... maybe like a few hours <laughs> of content. And Duratar yeah. was so bad. I, zone. I really do think starting <laughs> so at one bad. makes the most sense, but I don't think that going one to twenty is going to happen. I think that's way too much content for your average player. I mean, we only have it for what five and a half or six days, right? Yeah. One to twenty is a lot of content for just a player that hasn't played vanilla before. You know, yep. there there used to be they would have the trial where you could go to level twenty. That's yeah, true. not in six that's days, true. though, right? Yeah, yeah not, I mean, not in six right. days, but like you could you could play a trial WoW count where the cap was level twenty. So maybe yeah. it, it wouldn't be totally crazy, but I I think that six days is not very long. Uh, like like some people say, I wouldn't expect all races. Seven days. I would, I would. Like they say, even if your your race isn't supposed to start in X zone, they'll just start there. That's that's the way it always works on the test realms. Uh, if you're testing anything from expansions or otherwise, they just dump you wherever. Doesn't matter. They don't need to stick to the rules for this stuff. Right. Uh, but I would, ex I would, I would hope for something a bit meatier than the one to ten experience. Well, that might be what they give you, just to just show you the graphics. It depends what they're trying to show you, because it's a sell, right? It's a demo to sell it. Right. So what are they trying to sell here? They might right. just be trying to sell the graphics, in which case one to ten is fine. They're just trying to sell you what it looks like, what the action bars look like, what the spells look like, mm -hmm. the sound effects, and so on and so forth. If that's all they're trying to show us, then that's all they need to show us. Mm -hmm. They don't need I will to show say, any more than they have something necessary. I will say, regardless of what's actually in the demo, I think the fact that they're letting us download it and play it at home from our own computers is indicative of a sooner release rather than later. I think so, too. I, I'm with yeah. you. I'm with you. I think early 2019, at least by June, I think. I I have it. Yeah, I think that's certainly not out of the question. Mm -hmm. Um. But nothing late game. I think we're all agreed. <laughs> right. We're yeah. not going to get the playgrounds or anything like that. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. It'll, it'll be some sort of early game experience. Mm -hmm. Someone in chat said Desolus. Yep. Well, it will, we'll be stuck in Desolus. <laughs> yeah. For the demo. The Desolus. <laughs> the <demo>. Desolus. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> oh, the nightmare. There you go. What a blast. <laughs> Bye now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what would be worse? Uh, yeah. Not much from this. Maybe pre pre chain Silithus. Literally nothing there. Not even a single quest or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so here's this is a pretty good question uh what is preach's opinion this is from max richardson what is preach's opinion on new content in vanilla that provides side grades rather than upgrades and i guess he's talking about post nax content yeah this idea of horizontal progression paths right mm -hmm. rather than keeping it going the question's going to come up um you're trying to take the you're trying to guess the opinions of maybe a lot of people Mm -hmm. um, I think I think it could go one of two ways. Like if it's ridiculously popular, then that might be the best option. Like if it crushes retail well, then that might be an option. It's like we just need to develop content for this and not change it really. We want to keep it as it is and just create side stuff. Um, 
I think realistically, though, like we said, seasons and they already have, they could they have a, a decade's worth of expansions lined up that they don't need to do anything, mm-hmm. but they could just release them to them and they're like, there you go, and then we can start the vanilla one again. Especially if the fresh thing you guys are talking about is as popular as you say it is, mm-hmm. there's no need for them to do that, and they might weigh that up. It's like, well, we could do that, or we could just keep going with different expansions and restart the vanilla one, which I th- I think is more likely. I think they'll go that way. I'm not against it, but where does that end? You know what I mean? Yeah. Do they increase item level stuff in there? Is it better gear in there to incentivize you to go? What's the reason it's there story-wise? Does that matter to anybody? Does it clash with everything we did in the Burning Crusade and every expansion after that? I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. Hmm. It definitely doesn't seem worth it to, to spend millions of dollars into QA, feasibility studies, testing, development, marketing. For a product that's not tested, I think they would actually go TBC, if not fresh servers. Like it makes logical just, sense, right? It's yeah. Just sat there, might as well use that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Th- this is a question, kind of more for me. Maybe I should elaborate on it a little bit. But uh, Colin Sar is asking basically with Shadow Priest and Vanilla, uh, and when why they are taken with two raids. So basically, why why take Shadow Priest to raids? The reason why you take a Shadow Priest is and I'll let I'll let Stasive expand on this a little bit, but they they have a shadow damage debuff. So historically in vanilla in 1.7, uh, the debuff slots changed the the limit changed from eight to 16 debuff slots, and once that happened, you started seeing shadow priests in raids because they could take up an extra debuff slots with the uh, I, I think it's like a 15% damage buff for all shadow damage. Is that right, Stasive? Uh, say it one more time. The Shadow Priest debuff is 15%, right? 15%, yes. yeah, Shadow yeah. Weaving. Yeah. yeah, so 15% on Shadow Weaving. Um, and because this takes up a debuff slot, people didn't have them in the 8-man, or in the 8-slot raids, but whenever it got changed to 16, they would have that, and then you have, like, 4 or 5 Warlocks in your raid all getting, basically, uh, like, a flat 15% damage bonus because so much of their damage is Shadow Damage. So that, that's that's why you would bring one. It's pretty big, and this is just kind of on topic, but off topic. The more I think about it, I could see them. I could see them doing unlimited debuff slots. The more I think about it, what do you guys think about debuff slots at this point? It's not what I want, but I, th- I think that they could do it. I, if they did that, man, like it changes so much of how the game's played. Well, like... I, I don't know if it does because they said they originally designed. They would have to go through and tune the content. They would have to go through and tune the content for it, one hundred percent. And I think they're gonna have to do that anyway if they're gonna start with sixteen. Um. They'd but, have to tune everything, dude. They'd have to go back to dungeons, tune them, all group. Con- I mean, well, would... not dungeons really, because you only have five people in the dungeons, right? So it wouldn't. It really wouldn't make a big impact on the dungeons. But like Kevin, whenever Kevin was talking about how they they scripted the fights and stuff, they said they never, uh, they never designed the fights around uh, like the debuff, the, the the debuff limit, and designing the fights didn't really have much to do with each other. It was just more of like a thing. It was a technical limitation. So. If I mean I, I don't I don't particularly think they should do it, but I don't think uh, if they increase the values and they retune everything to account for the ability to have that many debuffs on, uh, I don't think it would I, I don't think it would completely <clears throat> change everything. I think it would, it might be a little bit different, but um, so it'd be real interesting so, to see. So, so preach back in the day when you were raiding all through this content, <laughs> how closely did you guys monitor your debuff slots, or was it kind of just yeah do whatever very, you want? No, very. Very, it was a okay. very big deal. We had, <clears throat> all right, we're nerding out now. So we, we had a spreadsheet <laughs> of the most priority debuff cup um, when we were allowed to do certain things, when we called for more dots, which is a meme that exists for a reason. Um, you know, that didn't include me as a priest putting Shadow Word Pain on <laughs> unless everybody was dying. Uh, there was priorities for who would make sure that happened. Because you had, you had debuffs that you couldn't push off. And that was the problem with the debuff limit. It wasn't like yours might not land it was that yours would land but it would push something else off it right, right. so you could you could lose curse of elements you could learn lo- lose curse of shadows that is a big problem mm-hmm. if that happens uh, and certainly if you brought too many rogues and too many poisons you know all that could be a big issue uh, so we monitored it very closely certainly when you're pushing kills you can't afford to lose curse of shadows you can't mm-hmm. afford to lose curse of shadows. um so from my perspective it was a very big deal and uh, unlimited slots changes a lot because we had to prevent people from using certain certain abilities that left debuffs that did damage, like poisons. <clears throat> right. You'd have rogues to accommodate everybody else. 
Yeah, exactly. And yeah. then that stacks up and does quite a lot of damage. You know what I mean? That makes a, that makes a pretty big shift in those characters. Because mm -hmm. uh, you also had deep wounds and stuff like that, which you can't get rid of because it's automatically applied. And of course, you want the warriors and, thing, and uh, right. ignite. Ignite's a huge one, like losing ignite for any reason. Yeah, that's really bad. That's a bad day. That is a bad day. Uh, yeah. Certainly on things like lower feb. So for me, from the rating side, like, it's a big deal. And infinite slots would be something that's... I think... No, I don't uh, think that's something that they should do. Potentially a problem. Yeah, I don't think that's something they should do. Because, like, at, at the end of the day, like, the 16 debuff slots, like, it's it's not vanilla if they, if they go over that. That's my personal opinion. But mm -hmm. whenever, we had, whenever we had Kevin Jordan on, he was the original class designer, he said that they didn't really... Um, the the number on the debuff limit wasn't like a big factor for them and how they how they did the fights which that's what i thought was interesting because that's that's the only thing that really makes me think that maybe if they just went and retuned uh the values of health and whatnot it would uh it would counteract that but again like i don't really think they should do that i think what's likely going to happen i think they should not go over 16 debuffs but i think that what's likely going to happen is that they're going to release the game with 16 debuffs that's, i think that's probably what's going to happen especially given like the the technical limitation thing and it makes more sense to return retune some of the early patch content than it does to like just to increase some health values and stuff because we can see the, the what are the differences right pre 1.7 and post 1.7 people are doing more damage right warlocks are doing more damage cuz now you have shadow priests you're I think it opens up the door to conversations like this and a lot of work. You know, that's what I think. But this this yeah, argument, this saying? argument that yeah. it was a it was a technical limitation and not a design, an intentional design, is irrelevant in my opinion because regardless, they had to design encounters around these numbers. Mm -hmm. So this is what they were balanced around, regardless of whether right. or not they wanted to do it. Yeah. Right. So I'm not sure that saying that really adds anything to the conversation. I see people in chat talking about that. Well, yeah, yeah I just don't know. I just don't know what they're going to do. I think I, like I, why change it? Yeah. Why do you think they're going to change it? I mean, it just feels like something that doesn't need to change. If, uh, if the well, they who, wouldn't. They you know, wouldn't change it. They would. What I'm saying is what I think <laughs> they're going to do. Like personally, like in my personal opinion, in my selfish opinion, like I say, just leave it the exact same, right? I don't. I mean, I don't <laughs> get any benefit or any difference from it, right? Who cares? I mean, just just have it eight and then have it sixteen at patch one point seven. But just given what we know, I'm kind of speculating on what I think they'll do. I think they'll probably go with 16, which is what it was in vanilla. In late vanilla. In late vanilla. Oh, do you mean at the start? Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm talking about. I, I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe. That's just what I. That's just right. what I think they're going to do. Right. But, I mean, I personally like. I. I mean, why not just keep it the exact same, right? But I think their argument is going to be it's not something that necessarily needs to be changed. But we'll see. I mean, I. I just we'll see what happens. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason for them to go to go out of the way to make such a minor change yeah. from the classic experience for some reason. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, I mean, well, I, again, they could do that. I mean, they could. It might be. Yeah. Some and sort of in code of encounter design these days, like you said, it was a technical limitation. Right. Maybe the way they're building the architecture now means that they. they I mean, of course, they could turn it down to sixteen. Right. Yeah. Yes. And I think one of the other things that people say it's like, oh, well, if there's sixteen debuff slots at the beginning, MC is going to be a joke. A lot of people say that. Crap, dude! You got 1.12 talents. You got all the th you got all the class reworks already in. That's MC's a way a joke anyway. yeah. You it's a way bigger factor to have that than eight more debuffs. The eight debuffs yeah. is nothing compared to every class being reworked. Like MC's I mean, it, nothing. Yeah, so that's why that's why I've talked about this before. I think given that they're going to start with 1.12, do they want to make? They say they want to make the most authentic classic experience. So, would it be more authentic if they have the 1.12 talents and, th and that's decided? Would it be more authentic if they go and they retune some of the early raid content, uh, particularly MC and BWL, increasing health values of bosses and whatnot? Would to it be, be fair? I, I, I'm not sure anyone actually has a 100% pre precise answer to what degree 1.12 talents trivializes early content. I mean, some classes were nerfed, some classes were buffed. I'm not sure anyone knows, okay, you know, with 1.12 talents, we need to increase boss, boss HP by. 3% to accommodate. I'm not sure anyone actually has that answer, you know. I yeah, don't know. Well, that and that's why I think that no one's done the testing. Yeah, and that's no why the beta is so important, right? That's what that's what I think. I, I think I think the the testing period is like really important. I thought I, I, I would, I would hope they wouldn't change it at all. Yeah, yeah. I hope yeah. they don't change anything. Just no changes hashtag dude. <laughs> yeah. just... well, what are we that's... trying to do? Make MC hard for some reason? I mean, pre one. Well, it, and that's that's what my point is. It's kind of like what <laughs> like where where's the line on that you know what i mean 
I don't know. I just think like like what is no changes to you and and I don't know. To me, like the no changes thing is kind of like uh, they've already said that they want to have as close to an authentic vanilla experience as possible, right? So I, I think that it's one of those things where just like looking at it reasonably instead of just kind of like kicking and screaming and spurging out, right? Like what what do you think they're gonna do and what is uh what is their approach to it gonna be? No, not dual talents. Else. We're not. No, I'm not talking about dual <laughs> talents. This is the problem, right? The problem this is, is, is the whenever, problem. I love it though. The problem <laughs> is, is whenever people have like they want to try and have like intellectual discussion about some of this kind of stuff. Uh, uh, myself, uh, intellectual. No, but people try and have like kind of like reasonable discussion about this stuff, and then all of a sudden somebody's like, "Hey, let's put a dual talent in Vanilla WoW," and it's like, okay, and then you just derail the whole thing. It's like, come on, dude. Like that's not vanilla, right? That's what we're I've talking about. Some changes. Well, some changes. I've already 100 exactly. shut that down and said if it wasn't in Vanilla WoW, at some point it will right. not be in Classic WoW. Period. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, but what if? <laughs> yeah, but what I if? What wow. I get what you're saying, but what if? Right. 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 Just added a right. queuing system for convenience. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. No, and, that, and that's the thing, right? It's it's just kind of like you you have to be able to kind of like have these discussions. Like, well, they're already doing this, they're already doing that. I wonder what they're gonna do. You know, we'll see, right? Because. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We all obviously want like we want vanilla wow right we want it we want it as much no changes as possible but it's gonna speaking be speaking of uh yeah i'm just speaking... gonna say yeah oh uh, yeah I, I was i was gonna say like i don't know it's just like to, to kind of like think these things out and lay them out on paper i think is really interesting to kind of see what they're actually going to do and, and to see how they approach the beta testing period yeah speaking of what they're going to do we find out in less than 12 days from now preach are you going to be at blizzcon I am doing something else for BlizzCon here with Blizzard. Ooh, very nice, very nice. Yes. There you go. Uh, I think they're I think they're paying for me not to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good gig, I, think that's, you know? I think that's what's happening this time. I think they're paying for me not to go, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is it's kind of funny in and of itself. Uh, but yeah, I will be not there. <clears throat> I was considering going actually. The reason we weren't going is we were moving. I'm not doing that in the immediate future. Um. Well, yeah, I spoke to Blizzard about it, and they have offered me something else. So I'm doing. So that. I have to ask: is it is it Classic WoW related what you're doing? Nope. Sorry. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, even if it was, I couldn't tell you. Oh, so. Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, I, I thought uh, I'd try. Yeah, hmm. I can't say anything, unfortunately. Yeah. Diablo Four confirmed. Go. Yes, I have the Diablo Four Alpha. Be popping, boys. Mm -hmm. I don't, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a question here from Ashiri. What do you uh, What do you think is going to happen with the with the sub cost? Oh, I was thinking a lot about this. Mm -hmm. I kind of think they're just going to put it into the normal sub cost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think they're going to increase the cost. I think they're going to leave it as there to get as many people to try it as possible. Because at this point, they're doing it anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to really extra monetize it, I think, is a bad move. I think it's yeah. better to... Uh, do they care if you're paying the sub for BFA or for vanilla? I don't think so. Right. The only, the only people they'll lose on are people who are playing both a lot. Mm -hmm. So they probably did a figure on that and thought it's actually better, if, especially with the way things are now with movement and raid swap, uh, server changes and things. Mm -hmm. uh, I, think they, I think the sub cost is just going to include it because it's the best way of getting people to play it. Mm -hmm. and that's the one that makes sense to me. Well, you have the highest chance of overlap that way. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You, know, of instead of you don't want to split the play. There's no reason to. You want to encourage people to play. What if someone plays only classic? Fine, they're still playing the subcast. If they're mm -hmm. playing only BFA, fine. And if they're playing both, they'll probably sub for a lot longer anyway. Uh, yeah. So that that makes the most sense to me is just to keep it that way. Yeah. Uh, this is a good. Will question. it have a one-time purchase fee? See, that probably not. That's one that I, I don't know if they're going to do that or not. Like if they're going to yeah. maybe provide like a um, – if they, if they make like a purchase fee or something because it's like they still had to develop the game or yeah. if they have like a collector's edition, like a box collector's, collector's edition that comes out for a classic. I wouldn't they be surprised could, if that. That could be a way of doing it. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. an optional collector's edition. I think yeah, an like optional, optional collector's yeah. edition. It would do very well. Like rose colored. Yeah, I could imagine the meme if they do like a collector's box and it's rose colored. I actually <laughs> tried to dig out for the show. I have my copy of Classic One, my original yeah. one. I still yeah. have it, but it's, it's locked up in the storage. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like so. I wanted to show that on the show, but I still have it. I kept every boxed copy of the expansion I ever bought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I regret. Like I, I had my old like vanilla stuff, and I don't know what happened to it. I uh, like I, I I moved rooms once, and then. 
Yeah, I don't have uh, I don't have all my old vanilla boxes. I have an unopened Wrath of the Lich King right there that uh, I I think I bought it on accident the second time. Like whenever I went back to play Wrath, and I was like, oh, I, I forgot that I already bought the expansion. So like I just I don't know, I just kept it and I never opened it. I can yeah. make you guys really sad if you want. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I play with in the guild with the guys from Boss TV, and. One of them, Loz, has the uh, classic WoW server blade. <clears throat> you know they gave the server blade? Uh, they sold them off? Mm -hmm. And he has one, but he, he got given it to him as a gift by somebody, and it's under his bed in a pile of socks. <laughs> and I just didn't <laughs> Wow. He said, no, I legitimately have one. He showed me a picture. It's just under his bed in dirty washing. <laughs> I said, you know people would kill you for that, right? <laughs> people would actually kill you for that That's thing. so crazy. <laughs> I know. And he's like, I know. I just don't care. Someone gave it to me. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, dude. Yeah. Oh, terrible. I have, uh, I have a couple of original game cards from 2005. I don't know if... Uh... If you guys were the same way, but my parents were like super paranoid about putting your credit card on the internet. So the only way I could play is with game cards. Mm. So I've got a couple of them stashed up. I couldn't find my old CDs though. I think, I think unfortunately they bit the dust, but yeah. yeah. You took yeah. no care of your stuff, man. Very sad. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but a big collector's edition, that would be pretty hype. Mm -hmm. I could definitely see that. I think, um, I think they could do something optional like that. Mm -hmm. I think it would, I think a lot of people would buy that too. If they what gave if it was, what if it was five hundred dollars? Five hundred dollars classic WoW collector's edition. Would you buy that? In my garage, I have two statues that are about five hundred dollars each from Blizzard. So, and I know they sold out of them. Yes, people would buy that. <laughs> I've got yeah, Sylvanas. Would. Yeah, I've got Sylvanas and Illidan in my garage, ready to be set up. And <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, like, they would uh, absolutely pay something crazy for them. Especially if it came with some cool... I'm not sure what it would come with, exactly. But some something that would make it fun. Because the yeah. music's been done, right? We can't do the music again. But yeah. a world map and things like that, people get super happy. Because they do really cool things. Because mm -hmm. you have a BlizzCon, right? No, none of us have ever been. been. You're going to get something like this. Uh -huh. Oh, that's nice. The, wow. That's the one wow, from cool. last year, I think. Yeah, that's the one from last year. I mean, you're going to get these big goodie boxes full of stuff. Because mm -hmm. uh, they love making that kind of merch. And they do it so well. They have really good quality. Mm. Yeah, badass. Mm -hmm. Very yeah, it's, badass. It, it's, our, it's our first time going to BlizzCon uh, here in oh, a couple so weeks. Good. Yeah, none of us have ever been before, so we're like super excited about it. The Hilton's the best place to be. Mm -hmm. It is. Not in BlizzCon itself. Like You can go do that. That's okay. But uh, <laughs> it's not the best place to be. You want to be in the Hilton. All right. Uh, yeah. yes. welcome guys. We're, we're guys, we're doing a Q and a right now. If you guys have any questions, um, you guys can tweet at us. That's a Zach attack. Yeah. Yeah. We got a, we got an Asmund raid. Asmund, thank you so much for the host, man. I, I really appreciate yeah. that dude. Yeah. We're, we're actually, uh, <laughs> we're on the, we're on the tail end here, guys. We're doing a little bit of Q and a here on Twitter. Uh, if you guys want to go ahead and tweet at us, hashtag classic cast and, uh, hand in the question here. Um, hit me. Mm. Here's one from Thornquist. He yeah. asks, Preach, yeah. do you prefer sprawling old school dungeons or the more modern streamlined ones of today? Oh, uh, I liked Stratholm and, uh, you know, picking a side, but you could do both if you're saucy. Um, and Moradon, uh, I didn't like, it, it depends on the dungeon, right? I mean, to be honest, it's not a case of like a design. It depends on the dungeon. Like doing all of BRD, I ain't got that time, man. <laughs> it's got, that's like a that's like a full day event. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to bring sandwiches and drinks. Um, <laughs> but like going into Strat and Dead or Strat Live uh, or, or Strat Scarlet, as some people called it, that was super fun. That was uh, always a, a good afternoon. I like both. It depends on the dungeon. Like a, a bad dungeon's a bad dungeon, whether it's sprawl. Some of them are great. I wish there was more of them. Did we consider Karazhan a sprawling dungeon? I mean, that was a big, big place. I mean, they had to split it in two, but it's still pretty linear. The raid or the dungeon? Yeah, the Karaz you know the Karazhan they brought out in Legion? In Legion. Oh, okay. I, I would was, say it's pretty a big linear. Old event. It's, it's big, pretty but linear. it's pretty linear, right? So yeah. you just want multiple, like, multiple end bosses is how you would consider it? I suppose so, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I would, I think that would, that'd be the criteria for me. 
Yeah. But, the ability to get lost, I guess. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very bad in pugs, but yeah, I agree with what you're saying. Because then it feels like you're in. Because uh, I love 40 man raiding. I would, I would gladly go back to it. Mm-hmm. Even though at the time I hated it. <laughs> you know, yeah. at the time I thought we were carrying people. It was garbage. Uh, I couldn't wait for them to take it away when they announced they were going to five in TBC. I was so excited because we could have dropped dropped a load of people that we were carrying. Uh, but over time, I I realized that we dropped a lot of people that were super funny to be around. They didn't need to be very good because it didn't matter that much in classic. Like the raids were really easy. Mm-hmm. And in general, like I had a much better time with forty people. And killing a boss when forty people are screaming is, is pretty hype. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You can't replicate that. Certainly not with twenty or ten man people. I mean, ten's great, twenty's great, it's fine. Mm-hmm. But forty people is so that loud. That's that scream in your ears is yeah. very hard to replicate again. So, but yeah, I had its cons. I know at the time I hated it. At the time, I really, really wanted, uh, to come to an end. <laughs> so it... it depends on who you ask, I suppose. Yeah. Um, or when you ask. Yeah, you it's ask. Not, it's almost like too efficient, I guess. You know, there's something to be said for just like that that dumbass who's terrible in your raid, but he's hilarious. It's yeah. it's an intangible. And yeah. In, in a way, you know, he sort of earned his raid spot just by being a dumbass. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah, his being value. the Joker. He yeah. Always dies. Does a bit of damage. Typically plays a DPS warrior. Whatever. Might might be a hunter or a yeah. hunter maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Be a hunter. Uh, <laughs> both broken again he's brought six all broken and those guys are awesome those guys are super fun to be around but i also i know i hated those guys because they were crap they were so crap at the game it drove me crazy when pushing me when we got to the harder stuff mm-hmm. but I, uh, right now if you were to ask me now i would take slightly easier bosses uh if we could go up if i could bring 40 people uh, just to, just for the scale of it, I felt that was real MMO stuff. You know, forty yeah. people felt like an MMO, massively mm-hmm. multiplayer, doing forty man stuff here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we talked about Undasta earlier on uh, before the stream started. It's like, yes, it lagged the hell out of the server. You know, nobody could press anything, and people fucking loved that shit. They mm-hmm. thought it was yeah. so cool because you felt like you were part of it. You know what I mean? Um, so that's the kind of stuff I'd love. To, I would definitely have the want the option of doing that. I would like it, you know, but again, performance phasing. Got right. to keep everybody running right. at 144 FPS, or so they'll be upstairs. <laughs> <sighs> I'm memeing, but you get the idea. Right, right. Yeah. What is you know, it? funny you mentioned. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to ask. Well, I mean, if you go ahead and stay on this, because uh, I, I was going to go to the next question. Uh, I was just going to say, it's funny you mentioned Nudasta. Like, now that, you, now that you bring it up, I had never thought about it before. It's the only world boss, I think, whose name I like staunchly remember since vanilla yeah i, I don't know i i i, I feel like you're disrespecting well. a few Walker, variations Kazakh. of kazakh oh kazakh okay but yeah. um yeah i'm just trying to think about it right now it's like just all the ones in like the modern like era right post cataclysm what mm-hmm. other big world bosses have we had undas is like the one that like rings in my mind like you said because like 80 you bring like 80 people two full groups to it yeah. There's something to be said for that, like the, uh, you know, the, the four hours Yogas kills <laughs> were always great. Like we, we, your phone would go, you know, uh, that's how it worked for us. Anyway, we had phone numbers when, yeah. uh, as Yogas was up, it'd be like, eh, eh, you know, get online. No, it doesn't matter where you are. Yeah. Like we had a couple yeah. who logged in from their honeymoon because uh, one of the Emerald Dragons was up. And you'd have other <laughs> guilds fighting you. And at that point, it's a war of attrition. Yeah. Who can just hang yeah. out here the longest to get the kill? Yeah, yeah, there's no four hour uh, with a gym. Oh, you know, <laughs> uh, no, that four hour with a gym, gym man. Like, I know, Chris. Uh, but, you know, that's not happening. That's not going on. There's no uh, four hour shower of whatever from Mr. Pandaria. I remember that world boss. But they're, they're super forgettable now, which is a shame. I don't know mm-hmm. why. Guaranteed success is uh, a killer. Guaranteed yeah. success right. is a, a mind killer of fun. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just like, what's the point even, right? Like, it's like, I already know what's going to happen. You already know the outcome. <clears throat> like, spoiler alert. It's just alert. a checklist. Yeah. So yeah. Go, you log in on a Wednesday or oh, Tuesday. Because you have it. So on a Wednesday, we log in. And mm-hmm. we have, you know, Will Boss. Pick up your coins. Turn in your emissaries. You know, you mm-hmm. just go, get your Mythic Plus box. Do your Mythic 10. And you, you, you're kind of done for the week. 
Yeah. Very quickly. Um, there's no like random. Th there's nothing I know I can safely log off at Wednesday noon and I'm done besides the raid. Mm. I don't need to log back in for anything. Like nothing's going to happen. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. safe and snug in the fact that nothing will happen <laughs> at all, which is yeah. rubbish, right? <laughs> That's rubbish. Yeah. I want yeah. things Isn't to that happen. A game where nothing happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a game it's where great. I can safely log off for six days and nothing will happen in my. Yeah, it's totally fine. Uh, which is, that's that's you know that's the topic that's been bring up a lot of times. Is like, why is it, why is this world so completely dead? There's yeah. so much happening in it. We're apparently invading islands. You know, we're at war apparently in Arathi. Nothing's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's <laughs> happening. It's all very safe and sterile. Uh, so yeah, that's something in classic. I would definitely looking forward to. It's like when we're in the mid because we did it mid raid. Sometimes you'd be in Blackwing Lair. It's like Emerald Dragons are up. Right, we're doing the Blackwing Lair farm. Emerald Dragons are up. Stop. Out. Got to get down there to Fire Lass or whatever. You turn up. The other guild's already there. Wipe them out. Let's get ready. They've right. turned back up again. The other guilds have started to arrive now. We're starting to see people. Um, cool stuff. You know, that's that's exciting. Yeah. You, you're all racing. You know, you're actually physically racing to get yeah. that stuff organized. And you're calling people. Well, and it's just, I want that back. And it's I just can like see the, the movement on a large scale, you know? Like whenever, whenever you have that many people moving at one point and you can see like, okay, that raid's doing this, we're doing this. And then you're like trying to get position. And like you mentioned, like as goes earlier, like if you go, there's, there's some bridges in Ashara. A lot of times like people try and tank along the bridges. Like you can, you can, that's like a choke point, right? That's a place where you could wipe a raid coming through potentially, mm -hmm. where you could have like frost mages and all this stuff there. They frost Nova, they cone a cold, they blow everybody up, sapper charges, like there's there's a lot of like large scale on, on PvP servers at least. There's a lot of like large scale movement that happens with uh, with these world bosses that gets pretty pretty crazy, pretty wild. So pretty well, as I mentioned to see. at the beginning of the part of the stream mm -hmm. is that one thing that inspired me to raid was that last seeing those guys come streaming across Tanaris, which is what I saw. There. Right. Uh, oh, you, you cutting out again actually? Oh yeah. sorry, but like I saw those guys cutting. I was leveling and mm -hmm. I see a guild streaming across the sands of Tanaris to go to do Thundarin. That's mm -hmm. what encouraged me to get into something more than leveling and, you know, re-rolling maybe and leveling again. And leveling again. Right. I saw that this is going on in the world around me. The world is doing stuff all over the place. And I'm not involved, but I could be involved if I went and did something, you know, because these things are happening on a daily basis. And mm -hmm. watching that happen, encouraging that to happen, like you say, this mass movement of all these players mm -hmm. know, makes an MMO because they're like, there are armies out here, baby, mm -hmm. and they're doing stuff. And you're collecting scorpion tails. Which one do you want to be doing, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. when you think, which one would you prefer to be a part of? And that's what really got me. Uh, that's the kind of thing I'm looking back for uh, when there's no phasing and we can have communities again. Will right. you play on a PvP server? Yes. What? <laughs> course yeah no yeah yeah no that's the yeah, of course yeah what are you a yeah. noob no, uh, <laughs> believe me believe me no we're very excited very excited i'm surprised are you are you scared of ganking or are you afraid of ganking or anything like that oh no 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 I'll... <laughs> no okay. happy to do it all day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what is your what is your favorite raid encounter from vanilla and why this is from uh true blue a101 uh I'm trying to think of mine. It's hard actually. to beat Raggy. Yeah. It's hard to beat that Raggy first time. Is it the best fight? No. Is it hard? No. Is it really awesome? Yes. You know, but so's Nefarian. Like, there's something to be said for when Nephi's and he's shadow bolting everything, and then mm -hmm. he lands and he burns the whole platform, and you've got to be wearing your clothes and stuff. Yeah. Like that I'm is kind of such hoping. a momentous moment when that dragon lands. Yeah, you know, this is it. Uh, and also, I really liked it's such a simple thing, but going into Anixia is that you go down the ramp, so you all charge into that room, and they funnel you through that really thin area. That's really nice. Like that's a good feeling of a, of a, you going into battle with a dragon is mm -hmm. you're all funneled through it, and then you you're cutting to this area. I love that part. Yeah. Uh, see if this mic problem real quick. Yeah, I don't know. I think. Uh... I think for me, Thaddeus is on the list. This is pretty high on the list for favorite encounters. Like I just, I, I love like how the percentage damage scaling works and just how everything goes from there. Like I, I would say Thaddeus for me right now. I'm, I'm just trying to think of something that I like more than Thaddeus. 
I love the story of Thaddeus more than Thaddeus. Mm. Yeah. It was, was cool, though. He's very uh, in your face. <laughs> when you open that door, you're like, it's a big dude. That's a really <laughs> yeah. big dude. Big boy. Uh, but, yeah. uh, Nax, I don't know. Nax had such a build up. I didn't get in there day one. I had to join a different guild to get in there. Mm -hmm. And I kind of. I was only ever looking forward to the horsemen. Everything oh. else felt like a pushover or wasn't as hard as I hoped it would be because everyone said it was like the hardest thing of all time, right? You know, you'd never seen anything harder. A lot of Nax wasn't that hard. It really wasn't. And there was a couple of bosses that you got stuck on. Looking forward to seeing Saffron come together. Someone just played out. Right? Saffron is really cool. Yeah. Seeing the eye before the emperors in AQ40. Always wonderful. Yeah. You walk it because you had to be in there first to see it because it despawned really quickly. Mm -hmm. Got in there and Cthulhu's eye was staring at you. That was very. But I think uh, Ragnaros and probably Nefarian were a very big deal to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nefarian vale is awesome. awesome. Vale is really fun, I think. Just because, like, the, old, the whole, like, oh, snap, like, things could go yeah. so bad so fast sort of thing. I almost got kicked from a guild for using Holy Nova there. Because it caused too much threat for our tank. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, because oh, I could spam it. I was like, well, why wouldn't I spam it? I'd spammed it before. I'd already killed this boss several times. And they were like, our tanks yeah. can't handle that. I was like, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> now we've got to oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, yeah I think... the Vale was cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think Vale's great. Yeah, like the story of Vale. You know, they they kind of give it the speech before he before he he, he in before the encounter starts. Right? It's it's awesome. Yeah, you got the mm -hmm. There's a little bit of like like Blackwing. an emotional investment there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I I never rated Blackwing Lair that highly because you get the three Drakes, which are kind of similar, They're not that different in, in terms of how you deal with them. Uh, Chromagus was always cool, but it was kind of like hide and seek. For Ten. Minutes. Yeah. Uh, and as a priest, I just pressed the bell. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, wasn't, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't the most exciting time for me on my priest, especially when Decursive was... Yeah, I think Chromax was a fun one for me. Yeah, oh. I, I think for melee and stuff, it was really fun for DPS thing. Yeah. Um, but to go up... On, the only thing I hated about Nephi, and I don't know if private servers still do this, or whether it'll still be a thing in college, is pulling Nephi, seeing what color the drakes were, and then logging out for like 30 minutes. Yeah, because that's how long it took Nefarian to reset. You had to wait thirty minutes. Right, and I think you're, I think you're cutting out's getting worse. Actually, oh really? I yeah. don't know what it is. I yeah. think it's Discord. To be honest, yeah, I think so. Yeah, Discord's probably yeah. just been really weird. <clears throat> Sorry about that, boys. <clears throat> no, it's no fine. Problem. Yeah, nothing to worry about. Um, what are you, Stacey? What do you do? You have a favorite fight? I think Vale. I think Vale. Yeah. I think Vale too. Yeah, it's you definitely have like an emotional investment as they as they give that speech right before. He tells you to run away. He can't control himself. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool, dude. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, guys, we're going to take uh, maybe one, maybe one or two more questions. Uh, maybe one or two more questions here uh, from the chat, actually. We'll take some questions from the chat uh, before we wrap it up. And then after we're done, uh, I'll continue my stream for a little bit. I'll continue my stream for a little bit after we're done. We're going to do a few more questions. And then uh, and we'll call it a day for the last cast. All right, I got I got one more question for Preach. Okay. What are you doing for this BlizzCon? What What do they have you doing over there? <laughs> what are you scheming? What are you doing? <laughs> I'll show you. I'll show you. I'm supporting this. No, oh, no. no, unbelievable. Oh. <laughs> yes. Unbelievable. Yes. Wave the flag, boys. <laughs> unbelievable. Some, some changes. <laughs> Unfollow now. Unfollow. Unbelievable. <laughs> Man, our uh, our good indoctrination troll. was good not troll. strong enough this podcast. Good troll. LFD. Good troll. Your vanilla, tra your classic transmog should count in live. That's all I'm saying. Oh my god, no. Uh, uh, oh, this is a good question. Uh, what does Classic offer someone who didn't start later, say like Cataclysm? All right, this is from Ventrilus. I would say the biggest thing it's it's. A completely different game experience um for me you know for you know pretty said for him it was wrath is whenever the game started to change a lot for me it was probably kata um at least from like a class fantasy perspective like some systems were added in wrath that uh i was not a big fan of right like lfd and whatnot uh i think if you started playing wow later on in its lifespan kata mop whatever bfa even you'll see a big difference in how the community works all right, just just the constant. Now, while this isn't a necessity, I think this is this is this might be a little bit overstated 
whenever people talk about community and, and the social aspect of Vanilla WoW, that's definitely a thing. You could play solo, you just couldn't do as many things, right? There's plenty of people who just, they, they just want to play solo, they want to go PvP, and, and that's it, whatever. But to, to play and complete a larger variety of content, right, whether it's raiding, whether it's doing dungeons, whatever it is, uh, getting into a pre-made for Battlegrounds, whatever, uh, I think the biggest thing you'll notice right away is probably the community aspect of the game is so much different. People are talking in general chat, people are talking in trade chat, um, it's, it's just, it's so much more lively. That's, that's what I would say. It's, it's just a different game experience. The mechanics of the game are different. Um, it's just yeah. two different games. In retail, wow, you log in to take care of a task or a chore. And in Preach's case, you can be done on Wednesday and not log in for six days. Right. In vanilla, wow, you're logging into an alternate, to an alternate world. Um, there's always something going on. You, you log in to hang out and have fun. You, you actually want to log in, not just to take care of chores, but to actually be a part of a different fantasy world, I think. And that's, that's, that's what it is. It's the community. It's the immersion. It's the way that you interact with other players, the way that you interact with the world around you. Um, it, is, mm -hmm. it is very, very immersive. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah, I mean, I just... What both, what both you guys said was absolutely on board. I mean, I, I don't... Uh, man, I mean, it's just... You just gotta you just gotta see it man you gotta see it once you're in it you'll see you know what i mean like for those that haven't played it before i i, I mean not it's not gonna be for everybody but when you're in there when you get to iron forge storm and orgrimmar whatever for the first time mm -hmm. you see everybody there that's when it'll sink in and you'll be able to tell the difference i think mm -hmm. i think so i think so i think there's there's a there's a big population of people people who you know may have played on private servers in the past or whatever who um even top players, top players like in the vanilla community who may have not played vanilla in retail and, you know, just for the first time checked it out on a private server or whatever before the classic announcement. Um, people love the game, man. It's, it's a different game. It's just a different game and people love it. Yeah, people love it. But um, anyways, guys, I hope you guys, uh, I hope you guys loved our episode of Classcast here with uh, Mr. Preach. With tips, with stay safe. Thank you so much for coming on, man. It was great. It was a, it was awesome to talk to you. Okay, put that away. <laughs> uh, no, get get that mind, out of uh, here, dude. I take worst it back. guest, dude. Worst <laughs> guest. Be realistic. Man. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, man, thanks so much for joining <laughs> us, man. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it was great, man. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm gonna continue well, I'm my okay stream a little bit after this, mm -hmm. and uh, from the rest of us, we will see you guys next week on Classcast. Take care, guys. Awesome. Bye, everybody.